they've got to try and make the shots to beat the field. So actually, from Bedford's perspective, it's it's a good field setting, it's an aggressive field setting, and actually they've just got to keep turning that, got to, got to keep putting that nail in the coffin. But from a Lee's perspective, if they can get a couple of men out, if they can get those two men at mid on and mid off, if they can go over the top and get that, get those men out, then there's easy singles to be scored there. Sure. Slips maybe in the in the field. If you're Brendan McCullum, then yeah. <laughs> Always lacking slips. It's a good turnout today. Loads of people down. Great event. It is a great event. La last year we didn't have the uh, broadcast, but we did we did have some loud speakers out there rather annoyed the neighbours, so... I'm all in favour of that. Well, I say, if there's another couple of wickets, we'll turn it into a raid. Yeah. Each batsman has their own theme tune, you know. Absolutely. This is, uh, What's your theme tune? Oh, I, I come out to uh, Star Wars, Jude of Fates. Oh, I <laughs> That's have specific. Yeah, I have uh, Chapel Choir following me around That's a great all the time. Song. That's what we're talking about, getting well, those men Was that back. six or was it four? Oh, that is That's six. a six. That's what we're talking about, getting those men back. They might be forced to put one back now. Which Gentlemen, could we have single. a look at the scoreboard, please? All right, 22 for three or four. So it's, it's actually very heavily swung in Bedford's favour now. <coughs> They'll be, the Leeds will be looking for these two to just bed themselves in and, like I said, try and rebuild. Bedford already forced to... Bedford already forced to put those men at mid off and mid on slightly deeper just in case they do try and go over the top. That's a wide, surely. Here's a man who knows a thing or two about cricket. Yeah, here he is. He sharpened up after the first couple of overs. It was quite sloppy early on. It's now, it's now nice and sharp. I think, given where they are at the moment, I think the Leeds will be looking. There we go again. So another lovely shot. This is a big six. I think from where they are at the moment, given their current run rate, I think the Leeds will be looking to push 150. That'd be, they'd, they'd be really happy with that, pushing 150, 160. So if there's anything for a catch, it's going to be on the mid-off side, not on the onside. It's worth noting, isn't it? This is, is this an under-17s game, under-18s game? Yeah, this is the T20 National Cup. The uh, the under-17s games are with a different, I think it's with, with, with slightly different players. But there's a, there's a couple of young lads in this. We've got Ewan Cox, yeah. who's a fifth former, uh, who's fielding at sort of 45 at the moment. Uh, he's he's a fifth former, and then Oli Burgess is uh, a, a T20 specialist. <laughs> um, spends hours and hours. Big in the gym. hitter, yeah. Yeah, hours and hours too too long in the gym just to sculpt that body uh, in order for a T20 T20 lifestyle. This 
this is a, this has been a great spell. From Tottenham. Really, really tight. No boundaries, apart from one that was slipped down to the third man. Other than that, it's been really tight. Taking a wicket or two, force the batsman onto the back foot, keep them guessing outside off. It's really, really nice bowling. That sounded like box to me. Yeah, there's some good pace on that. <laughs> Guests will even go and get some burgers. <laughs> That's not choice. to this if they're not already on it they're not going to well, hear, no, it, I hear, hear the plug but uh, <laughs> I if they that. just go to YouTube and type in Bedford School the Bedford School YouTube channel will have it top of the hit so oh, right. yeah, just type in Bedford School and you'll find it oh that's excellent yeah I think it's ah, the director it's of cricket's here to come and give us a bit of a roundup of uh, events of the first few overs shall we Gary, oh. what are your thoughts? Uh, good, good start, to be honest. Really pleased. Boys have got it in good areas. Um, I'm all right. Yeah, I'm really pleased with the way we've started. Hopefully, we'll keep it going for the next few overs. <laughs> what score would you be looking to place if you were the least? This is a good change to have Shiv Jala bowling at this end and for Paddy who bowled, oh. he bowled, he bowled well but he, was, he got a bit expensive at the end. So I think the batsman sort of worked him out a bit. Is that fair to say? Yeah, he's, he's bowled really well all summer. Uh, in the T20 games that I've watched. Um, I guess this spell wasn't his but maybe when he comes back for his second spell. That's, uh, that could be really important for us. Yeah, I, I'm not entirely sure whether he's a death bowler or not. Um, I think Shiv could, Shiv could be the key here, really. These these next few overs, it, it could be it could be sealed here, or it, or, or there could be a uh, there could be a chase on after his bowling. I think whatever score they get, it's it's always T20 can change in two or three balls. Yeah. So um, to say we can seal it here is probably a little bit early in the day. So even if they score 70, 80, 90, things can happen so quickly in T20. 
Thoughts on uh, on uh, on Bedford's fielding? Uh, to the last couple of balls, it's been <laughs> it's been pretty good to be honest. Uh, the last two balls weren't so good, but uh, I know they've worked really hard on it. So. Very. Uh, captain in the T20s tough. Really. Um, and, you know, the game can change in, as I said earlier, two balls, a couple of sixes and suddenly the momentum changes uh, to the other side. So it's got to really think quickly. Um, so it, it is tough. It hasn't really got time like you're having other games uh, to sort of think about decisions uh, for a long period of time. You've got to make snap decisions sometimes. And I guess we don't always get that right. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, um, if you were a, if you were a betting man, where would you put your money? Where would you put your your brand new cricket brand new cricket bat? <laughs> yeah, at, at the moment I'll be going with Bedford. <laughs> I think I've got to really, haven't I? No, absolutely. Yeah, we, 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 we've had a good start. Good, great, thanks. like a nice pink ball. Personally, personally I'm, a, I'm a big fan of the pink ball. Um, I think I think sometimes I think I think sometimes the red ball gets a bit a bit too uh, familiar, a bit too grating. So apparently we've got Mr. Brett coming with his uh, cricket. Yeah, Northant's one of Northant's previous finest. Yeah. Uh, good bowler. Scored possibly the fastest hundred I've ever seen. Is that the other day? Live. Yeah, that was the other day. Yeah, he scored against Bidenham, right? It was against Bidenham. Yeah, Absolutely, see, he scored hundred. I heard runs about off. this. Yeah, he scored hundred runs off forty-one. See, balls. I came in the yeah. common room, into the common room the other day, and uh, somebody asked me, "Did he score hundred the other day?" I was like, <laughs> um, he played cricket for many years. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah. but uh, I, could, I could have taken it. But no, it was uh, Tom Brett. Oh. Yeah, it was. It was good. It was good to watch. He did. Uh, I think. Is this think, the Oozles? It was the Oozles. Yeah, yeah, the Bedford School star team. He, he pretty much swung at anything. Uh, short ball, Yorker, anything. Apparently, I, I heard he was dropped about five he times. Was, he was dropped. He was dropped early on, and then he was dropped on 99. Uh, no, dropped on 98. It was. Uh, it was a bit criminal actually. I think he got away with that. Is this going to be caught or is this going? Let's go. So things have started to ramp up for the Lees actually. They're starting to find runs here, there, and everywhere. 47 for three we are now. Um, so definitely looking to post at least 120.
Yeah, so Tom Brett's joined us. Mr. Brett has joined us. Fresh from North Ants. How you doing? I'm very well, Mr. Piers. Thanks for having me here. Good, good, good. <coughs> thoughts, on, uh, thoughts on the game then, so far? Well, I've just arrived, actually, uh, fresh from coaching. Looking at the scoreboard. Looks like we got off to a great start. But I just Pegging it back a little bit. That was a key wicket that I've been told by their coach. Just been speaking yeah. to him, he's a big hitter, big wicket for us. Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely was. Um, what would you be looking to post then if you were um, if you were the leads now, in the position where they are, four runs, 53, sorry, 53 or uh, 50 runs for four wickets. What are you looking to post? Well, having just spoke to their coach, just before the loss that last wicket, he's telling me he wants 1-4-5. Uh, in the last round, they got through by scoring the same score. So they want the same score again. They reckon they defend that. He's telling me they haven't got anyone outstanding with the ball, but they've got a good team pack and they bowl well in partnership. They reckon yeah. they can defend that, so it should be interesting. Absolutely. I think I think Bedford often often get hoisted by their own facade. I think often they just try and tee off a little bit too much. Um, I think if you've got the likes of some of the lads in the field that they have at the moment, they've, they've got some big, big hitters, and that, that can often be... Well, I mean, it's a double-edged sword, isn't it? Either you, you go out and you smash it and you win in 12 overs, or you go out and, and you, you all get out, get bowled for 60 runs. I think you're absolutely right, Mr. Peters. Um, speaking to that coach, they think they're huge underdogs, so I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing for us. They're obviously going to play with freedom, and the pressure's more on Bedford School by... That's how they're seeing it, so... Should be interesting to see how we go about with the bat. I'm backing us, back us to the hill. What about yourself? Where's your money, Miss Piers? Um, well, it's in limited supply, but if I if I had to put it anywhere in this position, I'd definitely I'd definitely say Bedford at the moment. At, at the biased. moment, at the moment. Yeah. No, there's no bias there. There's no bias. There. Just do it once. Again. Just uh, just being sensible. Yeah, I'm always sensible. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> From your vast cricketing experience, Mr. Peters, would you would you fancy a bat out there today? Would I'd you love be nervous? to have a bat out there. No, I'd love to have a bat out there. If, if, if I wasn't such an old man, I didn't have such a creaky old back, I'd be out there. Yeah, talk to me about the back. How, how is it? Yeah, not great. <laughs> oh. Those of you. You, you can't actually see it, but Mr. Brett's really, he's really tall. Do you have to have anything special when you play that's outsized? Like a, like, does your bat have a long handle? My, my bat actually doesn't have a long handle. I've tried that before, but it didn't suit my, my style of play, so. Big shout, big shout. Huge shout from, from Bensky. Not out, it looks like it's going down leg from here, from square I, leg. I think you'll find it was a, an appeal for a catch there. Was it? Uh, that, that shows. Uh, that shows how much I'm watching this. Very quick on the stumps, isn't it, Jake? That's good. Looks like it's going straight on to me, Mr. Peters. Not a lot of spin out there for Bensky. Yeah, what are you thinking about the spin? Is it going to be turning there? From from looking at that, that looks like it's beating the outside edge. So I'm guessing it's bowling at a pace that's not allowing it to spin. But that's good one day bowling for me. It just slowed that one up a little bit. We're hearing, we're hearing it's, it's starting to rain. Is that going to favour one team more than the other? Well, it depends how heavy it gets. At the minute, I wouldn't say it's affecting it too much. I can't even see the, the raindrops. So. Now, I've been, I've been reliably informed by Josh and Ed Sol that it is in fact raining. Oh, there you go. But we're nicely undercover in our team. Gazebo. Certainly are. Right. Nicely played there, using the pace of Bensky. Quick single. Mr. Piers, with your with your explosive power, would you be looking to target Bensky here if you were batting? Yeah, I'd be halfway down the wicket already. Oh, just milking it here. Looking to rebuild, set a platform for the last five, I'd suggest. Do you think 145 is still a good target? Well, I said 150 um, after the sort of third or fourth over when they were a couple down. But Mr. Steer, director of cricket at Bedford School, has said that Bedford are going to try and restrict it to about 120. That'll be good going. That would be good going. But we've got the spin to do it, haven't we? Spin in abundance. So it's currently 59 for four off nine overs. That's 
Right, let's just get up from Bedford. I think they're right on top of this. Two more quick wickets and it should kill the game. yourself with a career in commentary then, Mr. Brett? I'm not sure I've got the, um, the tone and the, the accent for it. I'm not sure I'm quite upper class enough like yourself, Mr. Peters. I think you've got it just, just right with your accent. <laughs> and education. I'm putting hand. this on. You've been doing a good job of that then for the last year. <laughs> <laughs> It's starting to come down a little bit now. It's not, not ideal for the spinners, I must say, from personal experience trying to bowl, bowl with the wet ball. It's, it's very difficult. Why is that? Well, you just can't grip the ball. It slips out a lot easier if it's wet. And obviously, therefore, more bad balls, which is not ideal, especially in the 2020 format. Is that, what, is that what's happening now? Is that why ships put two down the leg side this over, or is that just unlucky? It could well be. It just depends if they can keep that. That ball dry. I haven't seen any rags out there yet. I'm sure they will, they will be out there soon if the rain continues to pour. Who's impressed you with the ball today? I've, I've enjoyed Bensky. Uh, ben Slinsky's pace has been spot on for me. Oh, one over. <laughs> yeah, but the pace has been absolutely beautiful. Beating the outside of the bat, that's, that's a good sign for me. Yeah, yeah. What yourself, Miss Beers, you've, uh, you've seen the start of the game. I missed that due to coaching. Yeah, What's he got for me? nicely. Bold nicely. Definitely save him an over for later. Uh, he's, he bowled very tight. He bowled very tight lines. How was his pace? It's, it was nipping off, actually, a little bit. It was, uh, it, was nip, it, was nipping, it was nipping off the length. Do you think he'll come back at the death? It's always tricky, isn't it, bowling, bowling pace at the death. What are your thoughts on that? Well, here's a tough one. I think if we continue to take wickets, I'd like to see the pace kept off the ball. It's a lot harder to hit if there's no yeah. pace on it. There's a tail ender, which I know a lot about myself. <laughs> if the pace is on the ball, you can just throw your hands at it and it can go anywhere. With the spin, you've got to generate that pace and force yourself. If you don't get it quite right, it just goes straight up. It's obviously great for the bowling side, not so good for yourself. Yeah. So we've hit 65 uh, for four off the halfway mark. Um, are the Leeds going to be looking to up the run rate a little bit now or are they going to be looking to tee off or are they going to be looking to just keep keep rotating the strike? For me, I think they'll be looking to just accumulate, run a ball for the next three or four, hopefully keep the wickets in hands for the last five overs where they can go, go a little bit more crazy and try and go for the boundaries. They're going to have to post a bigger score than the, the rate they're currently going. So you're saying start, start smashing it? Not, not is that yet. just you because that's that's what you like to do or is that? Not yet Mr Peters, I'd say three or four more overs of accumulating slowly, five or six and over. Give themselves a foundation to, to blast off from. Do you agree? I do, I've, I've, I, I'm, I'm trying to focus but I've got, I've got a man in my ear here who keeps telling me that I'm, I'm just repeating myself and saying the same thing over and over again. That sounds unlike Mr Guest. Whereas, whereas Mr Guest would be lucid and coherent on stream. <laughs> What's your thoughts then now, as a, as, a, as a spinner bowling when all they're trying to do is look for singles, find the gaps, keep rotating the strike, what are you trying to do as a spinner? As a spinner in the middle overs, I'm very happy if they're doing that. I've got no problem with going for five or six and over. Obviously, ideally... So are you not trying to find wickets or are you just no, waiting I'll, to see if they're out there? 
in this format, I'll be looking, obviously, as I said, they're looking for five or six and over. And if you can do any better than that, say go for three or four, then that's an absolute result. You're not, you're not looking to go for wickets. You can see, see what their field set is up there now. They're not too bothered. They're just looking to contain. I think that's exactly the right thing to do. If you go over aggressive, you're going to give them too many opportunities to score. I think the pressure from just letting them go at three or four, five and over is going to, going to be good for the team overall. What about yourself, Mr. Peters? I've seen your legs spin the next. Would you, would you be going all out for wickets? I always chase wickets. You're aggressive, so aren't you? Oh, you just, just wickets. You bowl them all out. You bowl them all out. But it's a little bit different than 2020. It's not a test match. They need 10 wickets to win the game, or 20. You're right, Mr. Brett. That's why you, that's why you're a pro, and I'm I'm an old man with no back. Thanks, bro. <laughs> Good gloves there from Jay Duxbury. Much, much more solid than um, Mr. Montgomery with the gloves. So it's been a good year for um, young Duxbury. Much better than uh, Mr. Montgomery, yeah. Yeah. Right, let's wait, Mr. Montgomery. Yeah, he's hungry for the ball. Very hungry. That's a big that's shot. That's a big shot. That is huge. Lovely use of the feet there. Pitch to the ball, and that's gone sailing over the side screen. Earlier, we were talking, we were having a chat about Shiv Jara and how important, or I mean, you know, how important he was. That I talked to Mr. Sear about it, and I perhaps suggested that if he bowls well and kept things really nice and tight, maybe he picks up a wicket. The game could die here. Thoughts? Yeah, it's obviously a huge, huge part of the game. These little overs, and I think with Shiv the ability to spin it both ways, which is always causes big problems for a batsman. But at the minute, they're just giving it a little bit too much air for me, and the batsman able to get underneath the ball. And as you've seen there, for the second time, I believe it's just sailed over the side screen for six. So I don't want to think about mix up his pace. I avoid the ball by just doing that. And why? Why is it that spinners like him, who do have good pace, and whoever gives it a blind and why? Why do they get to bowl darts all the time in 2020 to restrict the run? Well, it's getting that balance, isn't it? You can bowl darts every ball, but equally, if you do bowl darts every ball, the pace on the ball, it disappears. So you've got to keep mixing it up. And I think I think he's going to learn now from being hit for about six. He will keep mixing his pace up. That was a nice delivery there. Right on the money. We're being offered a spinning masterclass by Mr. Guest who, if you stay still long enough, will talk you through every ball he's ever bowled. Mr. Guest is a huge believer in pace on the ball. Some people call him Phil the Power Taylor. Sure his darts. He's injured at the moment, though. It's a good job he's got a good physio. So she's one of the best. Bowling. Who's coming on? Burbank. I hear a sign for the Saints. Any questions? Yeah, man, jack of jack of all trades, he is. Jack of all trades. Sounds slightly better than a jack of the star professional for the Saints. Been joined by the Bedford School Study Centre. Seems to be Mr. Brett's haunt. Oh, it's a wonderful place to work. I'm thoroughly look enjoying it. Really looking forward to that's well bowled. Join them. That's a good pace, sir. Good. What do you think for that? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of depth. There's a lot of left arm spinners for Bedford. There's a lot of left arm spinners. That is extremely <laughs> flat. looking a lot quicker from the variation and just holding it back a little bit.
That's a good idea, isn't it? Very good. Hope you can finish off. It's very important to see off your overs. Far too quick like that. What do you do then as a captain? Move men out to make sure that he does see off the over and just allow a single, or do you just leave things the same? For me, there, I've been looking to get Liv Whiskey an extra cover, push back onto the other wing to tag that boundary. And that's, that's four. That four back four. in out. There's been a few, there's been a few misfields, actually, around yeah. today. Especially they don't prove costly at the end of the game. So 13 overs gone, 84 for four. Six remaining. Six and over, put some wear, Mr. Brett. Uh, my maths is my strongest, <laughs> to be fair, especially under pressure. What's no your pressure. How do you no see pressure. it being projected? What's your projected score from here? 130. 130. 135, I think. Possibly, you'll not be pretty good at this. I'm going to say more. I'm going to say 140. I'm going to agree with their coach. Yeah, good shout. I think I think we I mean we want to see a good score posted. We do. We want to see a good game of cricket. So if they've got the depth, I'm sure they can chase 145. So Slavinsky's changed ends here. Why is that? Why would you change him? Is it just to get another spinner on at one end? Uh, we'll take Shiv Jala off at this end, but they could potentially bowl him. Why you want to bowl him at this end? Or is it something to do with the way is their is their turn? What would you? What, why, why would you change? Well, you, you hit the nail on the head there. It could be due to the breeze and, and drift. It could be literally just to change it up. You don't want to keep the bowler bowling more than one over at a time from the same end. Obviously, the batsman's going to climb the side and start to target them. It's just a case of keeping it fresh, keeping it different, keeping the batsman guessing. Just keep it fresh, then, is it? I like to think I do. I think Ben's just pace here is absolutely spot yeah, on. Yeah, it's, it's nice and quick out of hand, isn't it? You do well to get underneath that and launch it for two. Unless you're myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, but you, you're you blessed with the big long levers. I do have very long levers. I think we should go throw it, mate. Oh. That's a, is that going to be out? Is it going to be a third? Just off the line quick enough? Oh, He's put it down very right unlucky. on the boundary. He made some good ground there. Uh, it's a tricky catch, that. Dad thought to that. Where is he? Yeah, me too. Is it running? Uh, I'll, I'll stand as long as as long as I love the sound of my own voice. Couple of couple of players out on the sideline there. <coughs> you got Tom Brad there. Obviously, we would be keeping today, we, we assume. He's, well, by his own admission, is back off keeper for Essex. That's open for debate. <laughs> and then Shiv Patel, who is actually a, is, is actually a big player. Um, last three matches, he's actually got uh, nine wickets in the last three matches. So, uh, he's, he's quite a big miss today. That's a shot. That's a great shot. Fantastic shot. Talk me through it, Mr. Peters. That's right out of your textbook, and I've read it. Yeah, you can buy those online. Willie P's Batting Bible. <laughs> All good bookstores. Hands and rubbish one. Um, no, Shiv, Shiv Patel tried to take a catch. Uh, or tried to stop a bump ball, actually, I think it was. And broke the top off his finger. I mean, it didn't come clean off, but it, it pretty much did. So he, he, he's not going to be playing for the rest Cricket. of the season, by the way. Cricket's definitely the man's game, wouldn't you agree? What makes you say that? There's a lot of injuries in cricket, more than people realise. I think what you're trying to do here is overcompensate for the fact that everyone thinks it's boring. Well, that's exactly what I'm doing, Mr. You know me too well. Too well. Good arm. Very that's good, good arm. That's there good running Vegas. as well. That's good, that's, uh, that's good cricket all around. Yeah, it is. I'm really enjoying this. Good batting, aren't they? Just taking a rather nice selfie as well. Thanks for that. <laughs> how are we gonna f how are we gonna find that? <laughs> I'll um, be on Twitter shortly under Tom Brett twenty four. <laughs> you can follow me. This is just this is just 
desperate. Self-promotion is just desperate. He big heave across the line. No good avail. Got ball. Got cost. Off 15 then. Five O's to go. To reach your total of 145 left, that is 50 runs. That's five overs. That's 10. No. Four overs oh, left, Mr. Pierce. Four overs left, Mr. Pierce. Not one to recount tonight, no. I still think I'm going to be right and you're going to be wrong. Every chance that's possible. To me, Mr. Pierce, 10 and over here, minimum. Ten and, ten and over, yeah, definitely possible. Boundaries aren't massive. Uh, we've already seen the, the the lads in the middle can can get right underneath it. Paddy McDougall then coming on, not towards the death, because he doesn't bowl wonderfully in the death. That's another four leaked him down there. Just backwards of square. Um, what do you think about bowling Paddy now? We're sort of moving towards the death. Do you not think he's he's better to bowl early on, or and would you have someone bowl a little bit? Quicker now, Paddy can. He's, he turns out he's a great bowler, but is he a great death bowler? I mean, it's a big difference, isn't there? It certainly is, Mr. Pierce. There's two sides to this. Uh, Paddy genuinely takes the pace off when I've seen him bowl. It looks to me like he's adapted here and he's putting the pace on, which is good for his talent underneath him. But for me, I would like to see him bowl a lot earlier. I think he's a wicket taker in this format. Yeah, no pace to work normally, and normally just goes straight up next game. But he's adapted. Look at him. He's a sharp lad. He's Calf expected to go over and see that Josh has actually got in so bored of us that he's turned our microphones off about 20 minutes ago and now we've just been chatting to ourselves. I'm still enjoying it, nevertheless. I'm just impressing you, I believe. I wouldn't blame him. He looks happy though. He's obviously enjoying that commentary. Big smile on his face. Might be the only one, I think. Any feedback, welcome. Email. <laughs> Mr. Peters at Bedford School. Where can, where, can he, where can he improve on his commentary? Yeah, I'll put in a self-assessment. I'm a big fan of assessments. I do like self-assessments. So, if you're if you're fielding now, you know pretty much whatever happens each ball, they're going to try and run it. So, what do you do? Do you bring men in and hope that they're going to try and run it and go for a run out, or do you just keep keep the five back that you're allowed? This should be enough. High ball. Steady himself. Uh, good catch. Just say fair a hand. Good answer, Jala. That's a big wicket. Uh, well bowled from McJewell. That is a big wicket. That's 105 for five now. I'd like to say that's, that's Paddy's stock pace. He's took the pace off it. Big slog to it. He's straight up. That's good bowling for me. Good change up. Clever bowling. And so fair a hand. That's a well time wicket, Mr. Pierce. What do you think of that? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you can put the pressure on the batsman for the last three overs, four overs, something like that, then, you know, a new batsman's come in. He's, he's not going to be able to just swing first ball as he doesn't know how the pitch is going to play. So he's got to go in and, you know, see a couple of balls off. And in 2020, every ball is precious, isn't it? To me, Mr. Pierce, from the new batsman, I'll be looking to take the pace off him, make him put the pace on it. Have you got his eye on, like you say? And it's very difficult with the pace off of his swing. Um, but that'll be my advice from young bowlers. Bowling at a new batsman in 2020. Four overs left. We've just been told four overs left. Informed by Josh Moore. That's a great shot. He timed that beautifully and picked the gap. Real class. Were you watching? I, I thought you were on your phone. No, I was watching. Multitasking is one of my specialities. Reading, writing, and spelling being a form of specialism. That's why I teach PE. 
Well fielded in the deep. Yeah, he's got a Burbank out there, I think. I know oh, it's not. Burbank is bowling. <laughs> you might want to change up to the H2O. That's it. Great move. Burgess is very active out in the deep, really good. He is, he's a real athlete. Yeah. Look forward to seeing him bat later, he hits, hits the long ball. He's one of the few players out there actually that is first team for every sport and is lower six. That is cracking knowledge, Mr. That Bill. is a stat for you. It's not surprising. How's stat? Ollie Burgess, one of the only players to be lower six, first team every sport, every major sport. Not every sport, not like. Not surprising though, his his father is a very talented athlete. Well, he was a very talented athlete in his day. <coughs> the same. Played for Wales football age group, schoolboy level. And he's also my boss, so that's <laughs> why that's why I'm bigging him up. Hopefully he's listening. That's shameless. Great run in there again from the Leeds. They're really putting they're really putting some runs on the board now. They're going to get 145 though. I don't think so. Not the way Furlong's bowling. The pace on the ball is fantastic. Okay, so it's 116 for five, and we're in the 18th over now. And that's the end of the 18th over. So it's 116 to five after 18 overs. So I think 135 is looking a bit more likely, Mr. Brett. My prediction is 132, Mr. Pillard. Place a wager. Yeah, I'll place a wager. Go on, Joe. I don't earn as much as you, so you should decide. I wasn't thinking monetary. Just get a nice smile from the pretty tour from the, the Leeds head coach. Looking dashing in blue. Go on, then. What's this wager? You decide, Mr. Pitt. One, three, five. One three two. What? No, you said one four five. I said one three two. Leave it here, Lawrence. Let's get some points. Stop backing them up. <laughs> Coach says let's take one three seven. Everyone's getting a point. <laughs> Any more offers, anyone? That's a, back on. That's a fantastic strike. Shot. As we mentioned earlier, Mr. Peters, pace on the ball is dangerous at the end of the inning. Yeah, absolutely, and you can see why that was that was a wonderful hit. He has timed that. He's, he's hit it hard, but he's timed it. Yeah, he's timed the pants off that. Very, very good shot. I think Richard Torfer and head coach will be pleased with that stroke. He's just staring at you, actually. <laughs> Tense, tense. We've been, we've been informed he's tense. It's the 19th over. It is a very nervy time for all involved, especially the, for the Leeds coach, I must say. I'm pretty chilled. I'm not surprised. It's 1-2-1 one, one for five. been informed we're, we're going to get an interview with Tom Bradley but he's otherwise engaged at the moment because I think there are for once in Bedford School some women in the area and so he is just it, like a bat out of hell shot over there in his tight short shorts I'm not sure what to make of those shorts yeah, I think we should enforce a school rule of it should they be against some kind of rule playing for Essex is a little bit sour by the looks of it And that is what they term a full bunger, Mr. Brett. That's right out of your textbook, that one. Yeah. 
It's a good knock. Moved the runway on quite nicely. Making things a bit interesting. We're pushing 125 now. Moving for Piers. We've still got a few more big blows. God, there's a, there's a giant in Nice applause there for the up going back, but the raise of the back also. Well played, young man. Yeah, great innings, great knock. Really moved things on nicely. Good rebuilding when they were actually in quite a dire situation. We can all change these next couple of many balls. So it's 123 for six uh, in, the 18, in the 19th hole. Field stays the same. It's a new batsman. Surprise there. I'm sure he'll be swinging very hard on this next delivery. Confusion between the batsman. Scamper through for a single or five. That, I mean, that's another thing as well, isn't it? If you've got a fast bowler on and the keeper's got to stand back, the chances are if you're backing up halfway down, you can run for the for the bye, even if he misses it and he goes into the gloves because the keeper's got to take the gloves off and throw it in and everything. At this stage of the game. I mean, it wouldn't matter if Montgomery was, was, was keeping because he'd miss it anyway and it would be four byes, but. Of course, that's why they call him symbols. Um, it's a great tactic to have employed at the end of the innings there. If you're backing up, you're always going to get the single. Yes, we've lined up Tom Bradworth to have a chat with us uh, at the end of the overs. He's here. He's gonna, uh, uh, we'll, we'll have a chat with him in a minute. Thanks for joining us, Tom. Last over then. Four ball. Grabs him for room. Pushing for two, they're going for it. Spot run. I think he's just in there. Good call by the umpire. He's got a good angle for that one. Looks like we're on for my uh, 135 then, Mr. Brett. What's the score? One two six currently. I'm back in my 132, to be honest with you. Didn't actually tell me what you the wager was. You said 145. 132. Okay, you said 135. 132. Bold. That's well bold. It's a bit. I thought. I personally, I thought I was a bit short. That was going to go straight back over his head. But if you were batting this pitch, it would have. I'm yeah. sure it would have done. Yeah. Wasn't hobbling around like an old man. So, what are you going to pay me if you want to win this bet? You're not. You bet 145. Agree to disagree. No, this is on YouTube. You can just rewind it and I can watch it again. So, Let's 25 quid. <laughs> Let's do that. We could, do, we could do a talk for a few minutes, we? Without going back. to interview Essex with Tom Bradbury at halftime. Have you got some interesting questions lined up for him? Yeah, I've got some great questions. I think I've got two main questions. One question, why did you copy me and buy those shoes after I bought them? Question number two, why are your shorts quite so short at a school do? Anything related to cricket or this game? No, or? no. no it's not about that. What's it like bat batting with Alistair Cook? I was going to ask him that. This is a fantastic last over. For it's a great Furbank's bob really, really nicely actually. Really nicely. Furbs and, and Bensky have bowled really well all day. You have to say that. For a rugby player, I'm very impressed. Yeah, you're not bad for a rugby player either. Swing that. Two steps, right. Catch that. That's going to drop right in the middle of everyone. Well ran. Two to call, and it's a loose strike. How many 
so this should be the penultimate ball. Two coming. Great throw. That's going to be in. Throw needed to be a little more direct. That's just pretty quick with the gloves. Not as quick as one Tom Bradbeer, but pretty quick. Very positive running. Some of the best we can learn from, I believe. Just give his answer, didn't you? I'll tell you who we should have in the future team. With um, Alan Meredith, who slayed the giant that is Alistair Cook. He looks remarkably like And that's Wallace. that. Fantastic. Uh, a very interesting, a very interesting few overs. And we've got, uh, we're going to have the scoreboard up now. It's 131 is the total set. Seven down. We've got Tom Bradbeer here. He's going to have a chat with us. So, Mr. Brett, you can fire the first couple of questions. Tom, uh, we'll, we'll start off on a serious note. Talk to us about your experiences with Essex. Uh, yeah, I've had a good winter. I've trained in Essex. Uh, I've had a few every Tuesday evening. The worst Tom I've ever had. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's been a really great experience learning from James Thompson. Um, top coaches down there. Um, I've also trained a few James Thompson so far this summer, which has been doing pretty well so far. So no, it's been nice. Have you bumped into England's captain? Gooch. Do you work with him at all? No, I haven't actually. No, I've been working with um, the captain Terry. I think so, you were saying that. I call him TT, so I guess, I guess I'm giving him a call. But, um, <laughs> we can make one up for now. Coleman. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's been, it has been really, really good. It's been, they've been brilliant down there. That's fantastic. That is great. Will you be playing much second team cricket for them this, this summer? I'm hoping so. Um, now I've got time to see where <laughs> my exams finish and I finish the school. Um, it's time for me to come to the school. How are the exams? Yeah, um, they're not as academic as most know. Just the teachers being so good, to be fair. Um, they, they've done well. I'd love to be one of those other ones that they've done. <laughs> that was me hitting the new glass question. Oh, oh I, I have, have to ask, ask a question. Yeah. And, and so, uh, thoughts on today? Thoughts on today from uh, Aidan Foray. First cast. What do you think of Bedford's chance?
uh, we've been joined by scoring legend Angus Gill. Do you, do you want to give us a couple of words on, on what you think about their best chances? Yeah, Great, guys. thanks. <laughs> that, was, that was top notch. Really, really uh, cutting edge insight. Um, Tom, going back to you, uh, what are your plans then? Next year, what are you looking to do? Are you going to look to play some more cricket? Where are you going to play? What are you going to do? Um, yeah, I hope to see how things go at Essex. Um, I'm playing my club cricket now at Banbury in the home county league, which is a really, really good club. I'm new there this year. It's a really great club. So um, no, the future looks exciting at Banbury. Um, <laughs> As for, as for Essex, we'll just see how things go. Obviously, I've got to perform this year. Um, we'll see how it goes from there. And by the chance of wise, hopefully I can be looking to push into the Oxford Shield or Bedford Shield team in the next couple of years. Which one would you rather play for, Tom? Bedford Shield or Oxford Shield? It's a loaded question, but actually, I'm not prepared to put on camera. <laughs> <laughs> but going to Bedford School, surely got to be loyal to Bedfordshire, as well as Pitt being one of your mentors who's on the board at Bedfordshire. Must no, be. Yeah, well, so logic does lie with Bedfordshire, however, playing my club cricket at Oxford Banbury is just slower than um, three quarters of the Banbury team is the Oxford Shield team, just to be fair. Pressure from both sides then. Any money for you at Banbury this year? Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, no, unfortunately not. No money. Should we get you some steel? Let's do it. Talk us through the shorts then, brothers. Um, I think it's safe to say that I've my cricket background. Um, but what I would like to do is draw attention to your jeans and Toms combination, which the blue and the blue clash terrifically. I'm wearing all blue. I've, I've got With a blue, blue t-shirt as well. Um, not to mention Wesley's jacket. But um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Cheers. 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 Thanks for coming yeah. up. Thanks for your time. Steer. Steer. Just a steer. Oh, well, uh, Now on the test, uh, I think fairly happy with that in the end, actually, because the lads at Bassett Street played really well, uh, and we looked like sort of 150 maybe. So I think to keep it to 130, 130 odd, uh, I think we're fairly pleased with that. Uh, we dragged it back to last Thursday over, so that's kept us in the game. I don't think we were looking to go really hard at the start. I think it would be, be good to get a sound start and then build up the rules go well. Uh, that's what I think we'll do, but it all depends how they bowl. You know, if they don't do it in the right areas, we might be able to get a quicker start and possibly be playing for them. But um, I don't think we'll go all out at the start and just have some really bad quickly in that sense. Uh, I think we'll just probably uh, look to bat around one person and see if we can get in and be the backbone of the innings. Coming up, please, batters. Just the first innings. Okay, because it's the first 
Installment. Looks a good ball, that Mr. Pierce. Bit in the outside edge. Opened up with a spinner. What do you think to open up with a spinner? I like opening with a spinner. I'm a big fan of opening up with a spinner. Because I like walking down the track and hitting it. Be interesting to see how this young off spinner goes here. Under pressure. Rather well, two player misses. So, who have we got opening the batting here then? It's Majul and Momi by the looks of things. It changes week in, week out, so that is the latest. Can these two strike a ball? Or yeah, AJ Momi, will, uh, he loves to hit the ball. I was in the nets with him the other day on the bowling machine, and we just had about two or three bags back of the length. He played pretty much every shot in the book. Ramping, ramping Yorkers. And uh, if, yeah, if he connects, yeah, it will fly. I'm sure Bedford are hoping he bats a long time today. I think so. I think, I think more importantly, I think it's useful for Paddy to have a good innings. I think it's important for him to sit, in, to sit, in, to be a good anchor, to be a good base, and then for other people to build from him because he's he's a good batsman. He's very he's very strong. He's very steady. Um, and he's going to play your proper cricket shots, and then you know AJ at the other end will be able to will, will be able to build on that and, and, and tee off a little bit more. But uh, let's see some good bowling from him. Are you looking for real captains in it, though? Yeah, yeah, I'm looking for one. I'm looking for one. Uh, Tom Tom Brabbin, you know, he, he said he was looking for one. I'm I'm definitely looking for a captain for this today. Why is Tom Brabbin not playing today? Uh, international duty. <laughs> the ECB have banned him from playing, apparently. 
timed that very well. Yeah, that's 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 a lovely shot. Scrum the gap superbly. That's raced away on this quick outfield here at Bedford School. The groundsman, you have to say, did a fantastic job on the outfield and also the pitch. Yeah, it's it's been smoothed down a lot since the start of the season. It was pretty bumpy towards the start. Uh, actually, pretty difficult to feel, but now it's looking it's looking top notch. They must have spent a fair few hours to make it look this this <laughs> good. Yeah, I think so. I definitely wouldn't mind playing on this every other week. Yeah, we had a battle there the other week, didn't we, Mr. Brett? Yeah, it was extremely black. You got a few runs, Mr. P. Do you want to talk the viewers through your 28 or whatever it was? Not out, by the way. Average. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, batting for the average, I think. Um, not really. I don't. I don't really want to do that. Okay. I don't really want to do that. No um, but it was. It was in. It, it wasn't quite as many balls as your 33 was in, was it? I did take my time on that particular Sunday. Yeah. You nice could change your pace for you. You could say I laid the foundation for you to come in and play that way. <laughs> yeah, you could. Or you could call me boring. It's up to you. <laughs> so left arm over. So it's an option the Bedford School didn't have. It's a change of angle. It's How important is that, left arm over? I'm a big believer in, in left arms in general. Is, I think that left because, arm is that because you are a left arm? It, it's something to do with it. However, a left arm over seamer. Um, I think it's important just to mix it up when you're batting, having a left arm and going across your across your body. It's very different to playing a, a right arm, right arm seamer. So it's good to mix it up. It was having said that, he has gone for a boundary early early doors here. That's a beauty. That's a lovely ball. That's a lovely. Ball. Looks to me like it's just shaping away from the left hander a little bit, as you'd expect for the natural shape of a left handed yeah, seamer. Yeah, absolutely. A little bit of pace as well. Looks quite skiddy. Yeah, I mean, the it's a little bit green on there, isn't it? Yeah, it does. It looks slightly green from here, which is which is good. Normally, it's quite quite dry here at Bedford. Favours the spinners normally. Early doors, run rate wise, chasing 130. What are you looking for? Well, there's two ways of going about it. You can keep your wickets in hand for later on in the innings, and then go go hard for the last five. Or you can take the more Australian, New Zealand approach and go hard early and win the game as quickly as possible, take it away from the opposition. Obviously, that's more of a risky ploy. But, you know, I'm trying to work out here what Bedford are, which one they've gone for. It's a bit both at the minute. They've did some proper cricket shots, no slugs, and they've ran a few singles as well. So, what do you think? What do you think the approach they're going for? I think they're looking to, to maintain a steady run rate throughout. A sensible approach, just like Mr. Montgomery. Very sensible. Yeah, very, very sensible. Very sensible. They've had quite a quite a good year, haven't they? In general, the first team, the Pepper score. Yeah, okay. They, I mean, they got they got hammered by Harrow. Um, they got absolutely hammered by Harrow. But uh, outside outside of outside of that, they 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 look pretty strong. Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I can't hear myself. Nearly deaf from me, so <coughs> you're pleased to know I'm all right. Thrills, thrills. Spin continues then. It's a lovely pace. Work the big wicket, dot ball. A bit tight here. Some leaves off. Yeah, I guess. I mean, that's your advantage here. That's a big old slap. That was that a going slap. slap. Not by the looks of things, that's well fielded in the deep. That's well fielded, didn't get to. Not sure what to call that shot, to be honest. It wasn't that much text, but was it? It was more of a, like you say, a slap, a catch. Yeah, he likes a big old slap. AJ Manning. That's well it's a big shot and he's gone. He's gone. He doesn't like it at all. I think he thinks he's hit it. I think he thinks he's hit that ball. He may well have. He did play across the line, though, which you're always open to an LBW if you play across a straight one, which he's done there. That's a big blow, actually. He's a, he's a big hitter. He's good in 2020. The captain's still there. He doesn't look happy. Head goes back. I think he thinks he's hit that ball. I'm sure we can find out later. We can we can draft one of the boys over at some point during this commentary. It'd be interesting to know if he did hit it or not. Yeah, shake your head as you can't get your feel. 
is he just disappointed he missed a strike ball though you never know yeah you never know I mean he did stand there arms raised but that's a big loss a AJ Momi's been averaging 41 in the T20s this uh, this tournament his average in the 50 over normal Saturday fixture games is 30 so he is a T20 specialist he's a T20 player and he's gone early so that's a big wicket that's good that's great for the Lynx a huge loss big scalp like you say is this Furbank into the into the mix? That looks like Burgess to me. We'll find out shortly. Left-hander. Could be uh, could be Furbank. I'm yeah. going to say Furbank. Rolled some nice left armers at the close of the innings earlier. Now he's got his chance with the the bat in hand. Hopefully it goes well for for the Saints of Everton score. Yeah, the two Northampton boys at the crease. And that's a lead first ball, not wide deep by the umpire, but it's an early first lob. Slight kink in the bowler's arm, Mr. Peters, or am I just seeing things? I think you want to see that kink. Perhaps. He's bowling very well. Take nothing very away very from him. Bowling good pace, good line, no whips to work with. Bowling with the field up and he's keeping it very tight. Richard Kaufman, head coach, must be very happy with this. To start from the Yeah, lead. this is great stuff. This is great stuff early on. Big wicket early on. Keep the bowling tight. Don't let them score. We'll get the scoreboard up in a second. As we mentioned earlier, they did defend 145 in the, the last the last game. Obviously, defending slightly less this time, but they obviously got the attack to do to do that. So it should be it should be a close contest. Yeah, should and from what we've seen so far, they look really really sort of sharp and active in the field. It should be for a thriller, you may say. Yeah, I'm I'm hoping it goes down to the last ball. And then we'll go and watch Jurassic World. Oh, I'm looking forward to that. Big bag of popcorn. Yeah, big old bag of popcorn. Just looking. Big old bag of popcorn. Mr. Gracie just walking past. He looks like a farmer. Mr. Gracie looks fantastic. The lovely hat he's sporting. He's got he's got a lovely um he's got a lovely tweed cap on. That's going to be down the left side. That's going to be a, a white. He's 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 got a lovely he's got a lovely tweed cap on, and he's got a gilet, and then I think he's got some suit trousers on. He looks fantastic. It goes very well with that ginger growth that he's got going on his chin. I really like that. Though. He does, yeah, yeah. It looks fantastic. He looks like he looks like Chuck Norris, but more manly. I wouldn't want to mess with Mr. Grace. We better watch what we're going to say. It's a nice shot. Just one now, I think. Would you promote two spinners already, even though the field's up? Or would you oh, like this field sees an easy second run. That's great, Rally. Uh, would I promote two spinners? I, I think, I think I'd, I'd have another. I'd, I'd have a. I, th I think Beckham Hill looks a bit shaky against a spinner. I think Beckham's a bit shaky against a spinner. I, d I, I, I would favour another spinner actually at this end. We've seen what we've seen what someone like Slavinsky can do in terms of, in terms of getting that fast ball in there, and and actually not letting them score any runs. I would. Uh, I would I, yeah, I would get another spinner. Especially because the pace of this ball and these two, these two, I've noticed already, these two are really quick at, they're really quick at the crease. They're really quick at swinging into it. So regardless of the field restrictions, you'd be happy with two? Yeah, two I, I think so. I think so. Because actually, I, I think you've got more chance of bowling that tighter line with two spinners. And and because these two are so, uh, are so fast between the wickets, actually this is when you, you want to try and, this is when you want to try and keep them tight instead of running around. Thoughts? Have I just chatted a load of gut? No, I agree with you. I think knowing these boys quite well, I think bowling spin would be the better option to try and tie them down. Pacing the balls with both that early is a lot easier to put your hands through, especially when the field's up. But just talk about the running between the wickets between these two. So far, it's been fantastic. It's almost like they've got a telepathic communication between the two. That's exactly what I was going to say. That is Two rugby boys then. Can they can they bring it home for better score? Use all that muscle. Come on, Dan. There we go again. A short drop and run. It's very they're very quick between the wickets. You got between the two of them in terms of the rugby team. They did play uh, ten and twelve, so they're used to this sort of link up play in terms of running quickly. So you can see that. When the bowler's bowling, they're not backing up miles and miles down, but they're already halfway down by the time he's hit the ball. So as long as he hits it, there's going to be a run somewhere. It's a big old swing. It's 
it's almost like they don't even need to call. Just look at each other, that little look, that movement, they know if they're setting up or not. Have you ever had that kind of telepathic connection with anyone, Mr. Brett? Unfortunately not. Being the bowler, I didn't really get to develop that sort of, <laughs> that link with any other, anyone else when I was batting. I wasn't a big fan of singles myself. I'm more of a sort of big hitter. I've heard great, I've heard great stories actually of the sort of, um, of the England hockey team in the 1970s. Uh, there's a couple of lads in there, Roger, Roger Badger and Pete Duncan, and they, they famously had a fantastic communication, which was entirely telepathic. They just knew where one another was going. They literally didn't talk to each other, but they just knew what the other was going to do. I suppose we've sort of formed that, that bond, Mr. Spears, being roommates this year. I think so, I think so. Mr. Bracey strides back across. Looking resplendent. Big open shoulders. A commanding figure. That's a lovely sweep. That should be four down there every time. It's a lovely shot from third. What do you make of the run rate, Miss Spears? Yep. Yeah, it's good. It's on, uh, it's on track in the early overs. Definitely, definitely on track in the early overs, definitely. Continue with the off spinner. Will he bowl right through? Will I save him with the one for the end? That's a lovely, lovely bit of fielding there. He's down so far. Do you think they'll save him one for later or just bowl him straight through the off spinner? I think they'll save I, I think they'll bowl that through. I think he's bowling nicely and you may as well keep your thumb your thumb firmly down while you've got the chance. I, I don't think I'd bowl him based on what I've heard, which is that there's there's quite a few um, there's quite a few bowlers. That, that do a, a similar thing. I think I'd, I think I'd bowl him through. Definitely. I agree with you. He's doing a great job. Why take him off? Keep the pressure on early. Keep the pressure on early, and wickets may come for the Leeds. We'll be interested to see how they progress over the next two overs of the power play. Yeah, I mean, it, it hasn't been, it hasn't been the slowest batting power. Like, it hasn't been the slowest power play I've ever seen. But you know, there hasn't. There's been two boundaries. Yeah, two boundaries, but if you get that odd boundary and the way they're running, it can soon add up to a to a decent run rate. Change of bowler. Uh, looks like it's still his left arm over. Correct. Just testing. That's well played again, just for a quick single. What do you do if you're the fielding team? Do you try and just make sure people are more active? Do you bring them in, or do you just let them take those singles? I think if I was fielding now with these two batting, one new batsman to the crease, I'd be looking to be tight on those ones. Just in from the ring, but really attacking. As soon as you see the ball off the bat, really striding in to try and stop that worm. I think they're doing quite well, but you can't help it. If these two are running so well, sometimes you can't stop it. That's a bit of a thick edge. That's going to go down. Are they going to get two? There, it's an easy two there. Again, great running. This is really, really good to see for Beckham's score. Quick. It'd be a good advert for any youngster watching. Still, though, the bowling has been top notch. You have to say, it's been tight. There's been one extra. They've given away two boundaries. I think credit to the Leeds so far, they're really, really making a good old game of this. I can see how they defended 1 4 5 in the last round. A little, little flick of the wrist, and there's one there, direct. No, not the direct. Would have been close. It would have been. It would have been. It would have been interesting. I wouldn't want to be, be the umpire in that case. I was uh, looking at the international score earlier. I saw New Zealand nearly posted 400, so it's an interesting series there at the Oval. 396, I believe it was, New Zealand posted, so that'll be interesting watching later. If anyone fancies the highlights, when yeah, they get around home. Ours, Nash's flat. <laughs> See you there. Just thought I'd spice that anecdote up with a bit of humour. Hopefully, England can chase that down. <laughs> just, just a little bolster on the subject. What do you make of the new look England ODI team? Love it. Any more of an insight on that? No. Okay. Smash it. Smash it, I'll watch it. No wonder your 14-8 is doing so well. <laughs> yeah. 
short ball. That could have gone easily. It's splice that. Uh, a little bit of extra bounce. Yeah. Caught them by surprise. Positive batting though. Always looking to run. Who's, who's the next big hitter in to come then? Who, who have we got in the Burgess in the bank? is probably going to be the next big hitter coming in. You could say he's a specialist in T20. He is absolutely a specialist in T20. No, I think he's coming in. I think he'll be in next or he'll be in the one after. That's a nice delivery. If you can find that York in T20, it's so difficult to score. It's absolute gold dust. your first stint at commentary, Mr. Piers? Yeah, never done it before. I don't know if you can tell. You look an absolute natural. <laughs> Put this on your CV, who knows? Yeah, that, that'll read well on the CV. Once commentated national T20 game for five viewers online. Didn't what? embarrass self too much. I hope there's more than five. I don't think there will be. I'll tell you what, if, if you are... Watching the live stream, give us a tweet, hashtag BScricket15, let us know you're watching, and uh, let us know if there's anything you want us to do. If it's if it's shut up, then 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 don't bother tweeting, but but if, if you if you do want to tweet, hashtag BScricket15, let us know what you think. Alternatively, I have my phone with me, my Twitter is at TomBrett24. <laughs> Stop plugging yourself. I will receive it uh, instantly, I'll give you a little shout out, that'd be nice, wouldn't it? That shout out from an ex-professional cricketer come he star. Use the pace, lovely there. Will it go for four? Fantastic timing. Lovely four time. runs, little late cut. It's a low risk shot when it's gone for four. Great option. Yeah, so checking the Twitter page. No, no updates yet. So give us a shout. Hashtag BS Cricket 50. At Tom Brett 24. <laughs> Need some more followers. That's desperate. Top notch. My my bank is astronomical. Brett is currently checking his Twitter to see if he actually has got any more followers. I'm ashamed to say I'm, I'm disappointed, nothing yet. I'll give you a few more seconds, I'm a bit quick. I'm not all quick typers like Mr. Piers. Batsmen are putting the pressure on the field here. The running is amazing. You know what it's like yourself, Mr. Pierce. If you're in, in the deep right, and the batsman's time? looking to push and running aggressively, it really does put the yeah, pressure on you. It does create more fumbles. You, you've got to say, it does get to you sometimes. You can look up and you see they're running really fast and backing up. It makes you panic. Yeah, I mean, if you're quick between the wickets, you can take a, you can take a quick single pretty now. much anywhere, unless it goes right down the field and straight at a good rate of, yeah, a good rate of knots. You can pretty much take a single wherever you want if you're quick between the wickets. And if both of you are quick between the wickets, then it's a no-brainer. I mean, if you're if you're Mr. Brett, it's two strides and you're at the other end. Yes, I am lanky. Let's get that <laughs> out there early. Just think sure, Josh. Mr. Peters has just put a tweet out to try and get some more listeners for us. Thanks, Emma Bradbury, for your tweet. I hope you enjoyed uh, listening to, to Tom's little interview. It was very informative. We are watching online with Pims and Peroni. Tom Bradbury's mum and dad. That's lovely, though. Proud parents, they must be. Must be proud of those shorts. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I'd be too proud of those shorts. Top 
football again. Push the building in this over. Thirty-five for one then of seven overs. Ninety-nine still left to get. And thirteen, well, twelve and a half overs to do it in. So it's really nice tight bowling from the Lees. A lot of runs through singles, but the total is climbing. This game really could go either way at this stage. Yeah, this is great. Mr. Brett's just had a buzz on his phone. I think he's got slightly overexcited. I've got a tweet there with me. So the reviews for the commentary aren't all bad, despite <laughs> despite the uh, disapproving shakes of the head and nods around the ground. But HMC uh, Schools Cricket have, have tweeted us, and uh, there's a few people watching, so that's great. Really pleased to hear you're enjoying it out there. We certainly are. Fantastic evening here at Bedford School. The rain stayed away as well. At one point, the forecast was bad, but we've got lucky, haven't we, Miss Peters? Yeah, we have got lucky. And we're in for a treat, I think. This is gonna go, this is looking close at the moment. Is that gonna skip away for four? Not quite, great fielding in the deep, great fielding in the deep. Are they gonna get three? No. Fantastic fielding from the Lees. It's that shot again, that little late cut, just using the pace to his advantage there. That looked to be a go-to shot. Bit of chin music, that also on that. Will he bother bounce with the keeper up? I doubt it. It's a slow ball, turned around, one, looking for two, no. Good backing up. Top stuff, not a bad over at all. I think at this stage it's a good job, Bedford have got some large hitting players to come. They may be in, under a little bit of pressure later on in this game. And I'm sure they're happy to know they've got some guys like Ollie Burgess to come. who can clear the ropes at ease. Forty-two for one, then off eight overs. I think now, in terms of in terms of Bedford's outlook, Mr. Brett, that's a lovely little shot. Though. In terms of Bedford's outlook, are they looking to just protect those wickets so that they can tee off a little bit later, or are they looking just to start swinging now, or is it a case of just you know keep rotating the strike, keep getting those runs going? For me, if they can get the odd boundary and run as well as they are, I don't think they'll have a problem. And as we mentioned earlier, they can leave it to their big hitters for the last five and really put the pressure back on Leeds. That's the way I think it's panning out. I can't see it changing at the minute. They're still running between the wickets. Not really taking any risk, but they don't really need to at this stage. And if Duckworth Lewis comes into play, is it looking good or is it looking bad? I'd say it's looking bad currently, but I don't think we need to worry about that looking at the skies. It's been very much the same all night. I think it will stay dry, which is positive news. Top stuff. That's going to be close. What's the umpire given? He's given him out. That looks extremely close to me. I'm not sure that's the right decision. I'm not being biased. I think, I, I, I think he's just gone there. That's very quick fielding, very good stump from the keeper. That did look close though. Is that going to change much? That's Furbank out. McJewel still to stay in. So captain's still in. Furbank, a lovely little knock. They ran really hard. Is the next runner going to be able to keep up with the pace that Bedford have been setting in terms of their quick singles? Well, that is the big question. That wicket has really put the cat amongst the pigeons. Who is the next batsman? We'll find out shortly. He strides down the steps. I think they're coming from the other side, actually. Correct. Ben Slavinsky. And that's Ben Slavinsky. He nets furiously. So he'll be in relatively good nick. So for him, it's all about just getting in, settling down, seeing a couple of balls off, and then starting to play his strokes. But still Bedford yet to bring in, after their openers, one of the big hitters. It's all about 
finding those singles still by the looks of things from, from where we're sitting. The batsmen they've got in the crease are about singles. They're about proper cricket shots, about finding the gaps. They're not about swinging for fours and sixes. I can honestly say, this lad coming into bat now, I've never seen anyone put so many hours into their game. Even when I was in the professional setup, I've never seen so many hours spent on the bowling machine, all bowling off spinners. He really is committed, and I wish him all the best. Great attitude, good to see it. Feel like yourself, Mr. Pierce. Real hard working. Yeah, but not quite as good looking. I haven't quite got your eyebrows. Majestic. That's well bowled. Got a bad feeling Bedford could get bogged down there with the double spin. Yeah, I think so. I think, I think, especially if it's this tight, you can only wait for the short ball so, so long, can't you? The good news is Ben, who's coming to bat, is a good runner between the wickets. So hopefully they can turn one to two, two to three. Etc. Yeah, there's a definite game plan, isn't there, with their batting order, which obviously they leave quite open and they have someone floating around. Their floaters have been put slightly lower down, so that this sort of active high run rate can stay at a. At at a constant level for as long as possible. You know, you've got men out in the middle. The last three batsmen that have been in have been all about the quick single. They've been all about the looking for a second, putting pressure on the fielders, instead of putting pressure on the bowler with the with the bouncers, etc., etc. Do we know who the winner of this game plays in the next round at all? Has not no. yet been drawn. No, I haven't got a clue. My uh, my extensive research doesn't go back that far. I know you spent many hours on it this afternoon when you got told at three o'clock. I had a few, I've got a few stats on my sleeve. You brought some out earlier about um, AJ's average. That was impressive. I was very impressed by that. Yeah, well, you, that's a big old swing. This keeper's got lovely hands. It's melting into the palm of his hands. Really good to watch. Especially standing up. It's not an easy skill. Off the seamer, especially. What does that tell the batsman, then, if the, if the keeper's standing up to the seamer? Well, the advantage for the fielding team, if the keeper is standing up to the stumps, it stops the batsman from using his feet and darting down the wicket. The batsman can still dart down the wicket, but it's a risk. If you miss it, you're stumped. So if, the batsman, if you're batting and the keeper's behind you, it just puts that bit of pressure. He's in your ear, he's talking to you all the time, applying the pressure. And it, it's tough sometimes when the keeper's up. It takes some of your big shots away from you and you just denerdle it. It's a risk to run down the wicket. But, you know, if they keep going like this, we might have to take that risk. That's a nice little shot, that, but well fielded. What are we having for dinner tonight, then, Mr B? That's actually quite a good point. I've forgotten all about it. Normally, the canteen closes at half six. I've missed that due to this commentary stint, but I've enjoyed it. I'm not going to regret that at all. <laughs> um, it's a good question. Something healthy, I think. Just get your body ready for Thailand. That's a big shout. That's gone. That's Slavinsky's gone for two. Looks like he's played across that again. Feature of two of the dismissals tonight, and it's hit on the back leg. You can't have many complaints with that. Obviously, I'm not sure what line it is from sitting at deep cover. But yeah, that looked absolutely plumb from here. He doesn't look disappointed with the decision. He knows he's played around it. Scores on the doors now, then. 49 for three will be. 49 for three. Uh, Bedford lagging behind a little bit now. T20, obviously they need 85 now of just over 10 over, so the run rate creeping up towards 9 again. It looks like they've gone for an aggressive move to replace Ben. They've gone for Clark, I think he's a big hitter. Yeah, Charlie Clark scored quite a few runs recently. Um, last 2020, hit 70 odd in the national, um, in the normal league fixtures. He hit 60 not out to bring Bedford home. He's, he can hit it. He can hit it on his day. He can absolutely hit it on his day. And as we've seen, he's he's good with the ball. So it's down to him really to start carving out a few runs. I think Bedford are slightly on the back foot now. I think they need to rebuild a little bit. Paddy McDowell's still at the crease. It's still that captain's innings we talked about. That important man is still there. Bedford are most certainly behind the eight ball here. They're gonna have to really think about how they could approach these next five overs. They can't really afford to lose too many quick wickets, but at the same time, they've still got to keep the scoreboard ticking. How they go about that will be very interesting. Will they go for boundaries? Will they try and push twos and threes? I think, I think, I think now it's a little bit about pushing, uh, pushing the old boundary. I think they've got to think about the boundaries now. Whereas before they didn't have to think about the boundaries, they just had to think about, let's get one, let's take two if it's there, but let's, let's try to take boundaries now, I reckon. Just look
looking at the scoreboard, it's 49 for three or 10 overs, 85 still required, 8.5 and over for the last 10. That's, that's a tall order, obviously seven wickets in hand and Bedford do bat deep, so it really is poised for a fantastic finish. Yeah, this is spot on, this is exactly what we want, a good old game of cricket right down to the wire of the National Cup, this is perfect. I'm really looking forward to this last 10 overs, I'm glad I came down. Resident ex-pro Simon Lincoln has just walked past, he's looking absolutely dashing in his loafers and his his brown suede moleskin trousers. That is a fantastic head of hair that man has got. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? it looks like he spent a lot of time surfing. I, I do not know a man who has destroyed his body in more ways than Simon Lincoln has destroyed his body. That's a lovely shot. Is still. that going to go? All pressure on the fielder. Just one there. He's always hit that too well, Mr. Brett. He didn't look to try and push a second there, which I'm slightly disappointed in being a Bedford uh, coach. It lacks a days ago on the first run. That's a great word. Thank you. Few and far between. One of few. Quick single Quick left single there. Again, pressure goes straight back on the fielders. Ben Svinsky walks past us, looks disappointed with his uh, dismissal. I'm sure he'll be going for a lap to reflect on, on that shot. He's a very intense character. Nice shot from Paddy again there. They're going to look to push two? Probably not. That man out there at um, over towards deep extra cover has got, uh, sorry, that's um, near over towards Cal Corner, long on. He's got a lovely arm, so it's going to be difficult to get runs over there. Very quick across the outfield. So, uh, I mean, that's the advantage there of playing at this age, isn't it, Mr. B? Absolutely correct. I'm just looking around the field there. When, when you're new to the crease and the field is spread and the pace is off the ball, you've got to think to yourself, where am I going to hit these boundaries? It's not that easy. Where would you go then? Over the top? Well, to be honest, I wouldn't go straight away. I'd be looking to come down in the ground to this spinner, try and work in for ones to start with, and then, you know, you've got to think about it. Have you got a sweep in your locker, or, or do you back yourself to clear long on the line? For me, I'd be looking to go over the top straight, because I'm quite tall, I can't really play the sweep. But if you are a cute player like that, definitely the sweep's an option. This outfield will race away if you connect. Race up. Mr. Lode is giving us a sort of derisory look as he walks past. He's wearing a sort of ragtag assortment of different clothes. He's got, he's gone for the Bedford School trackies and the D of E top. He's got a bold look. Oh, and he's got the ski top on underneath. So he's rocking every bit of stash you can possibly find today. Mr. Lode had a great performance in the week yeah, for the users. Yeah, fantastic users. performance for the staff team. Three for 18 off four rovers. Took two key wickets, you would have thought he'd won the Ashes. Some would say <laughs> he was man of the match. He's got my vote. Yeah, he's got my vote too. Really, real pleasure to witness that actually. Tweets, Mr. Pierce. Let's check my phone. Hundreds of listeners. That's great news. Oh, so Nick, and it's just gone past the bats. It's just gone past the keeper. Just a single. Are they going to get two? No, it's just a single down there. Fantastic arm. Leeds have really impressed me in the field. They've really thrown yeah, themselves about. Fantastic. Yeah. No wonder. I keep saying it, but that's that's how great teams defend low scores. Emma Bradby has been back in touch. Apparently, she's ashamed of Tom's shorts, which, to be to be quite honest. I think I think we're all with her there. The boys got no shame. <laughs> you can get away with it when you're such a superstar cricketer like Tom. Essex, Essex future. Full toss, single down the ground. That's positive though. It. Walking, walking down towards to make it, turn it into a full toss. Another misfield. Is it going to go for two? Direct hit would have seen him out there. Fantastic running. It's good running again. Bedford's running has been top notch all day. Still though. Fantastic work in the field from Lilies. Yeah, it was a slight misfield, but he gets up, gets that arm in straight away. I've been really impressed with how the Lilies have fielded so far. I think this is going to be really tight. They really are giving themselves every chance to win this game, but there's a long way to go. Who knows? Sam did like Nick almost as well. The batsmen are really starting to swing now. Mr. Strachan is going for a chat. We, we've got, uh, we've got. We've got Matt Strachan here, who's, who's leaving who's leaving Bedford School this year. He's going to come down and have a, have a bit of a chat with us. Have you, have, you, uh, have, you, have you been watching for long, or have you just turned uh, up? I watched it at the start. I watched uh, the, first, the first, sorry, the Leeds, the Leeds innings. 
That's high. Is that as high as going over his head? It is going over his head. Is that going to be four? A bit lucky, I think. A much Sorry. needed boundary there. Uh, Quite a careful operation. Um, so yeah, so no, the leaves were hitting it all over. Uh, it was quite confusing initially because it's blue against blue. But um, we got it. That's, that's, that's huge. A maximum. That's 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 a maximum. That is a maximum. Six runs that there. Is, that's huge. Paddy McDowell starts to tee up. Ten off two balls. That, that is key. Yeah, we need to try and park them back a bit. Because that's in with them at the moment. What do you think about? We've we've been chatting a lot about Bedford's running between the wickets. Yeah. We've been saying they're quite fast, taking singles everywhere. Would you say? I would say they need to be a little bit more imposing. Oh hi, there he is. Smile for the camera. Uh, I'd say they need to be more. Imposing. They really need to run that first one a lot harder. Would you agree? Um, they need yes, I think. Quicker. I think. I think if they if they want to make two, but I think at the moment it's all it's, it's about trying to trying to just make damn sure that you get one. Yes. I mean, there you go. That's that's like more positive. That's good. Yeah. No, if we, that's that's the kind of compliment of cricket we want to see. You know, it's a fast outfield. We've got to make these guys work. So you must have seen some T20 games at the yes. time. Do you know what? It's a, it's not a regret. But growing up in South Africa as a schoolboy, we didn't play T20. It was all. Uh, we played a couple of, you know, day games. We played a couple of four-day games. Uh, but T20 cricket. We played pajama cricket. We played under the lot. Lo what? Uh, under oh, the really? lights at um, Newlands, which was always great fun. Got a few runs in Newlands. 64 needed then off eight. What do you reckon for the batsman in at the moment and the batsman coming in? Um, sensible, but go a bit back, back themselves, self belief. It's like that quote I said to uh, Mr. Brett the other day, which is uh, everyone's got a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> that is, is that inspirational. Is that a Mike Tyson quote? That's Mike Tyson. <laughs> He's a I good example. It was a maths racking quote, but no, it worked. Didn't he go to prison? Yeah. <laughs> He's a great role model, isn't he? <laughs> Why is he the uh, England is, I think, Joss, I think it's down to Josh Butler now. Is it? By the sounds of things, I think they're three wickets down. Have we got a score update? Uh, I, have can, a look. I, I, I can give you a score update, actually. Yeah, let's hear it. It's a lovely shot. Paddy's really, really playing. Yeah, he's in good mood. The fielders, aren't they? They are, and the, and the fielders are, are performing fantastically well. So England's 172 for 23.5 overs, chasing 400. So we're, it's on track. It's on track. It's, it's about the same as... Zealand were on, so it should be a nice close finish there. I think it will lose. Let's be honest, the more, the, the, more on, the, the more exciting game is out in the middle right now at Bedford School. Yeah, true. Come on, let's get right over time. Paddy's going to have to dive to get in. Oh, Missfield. That's what you need. You need a bit of luck, I suppose. Positive There's intent. And McDowell's calling for drinks. He's obviously absolutely shattered out there. Mr. Brett, you, you like to field, you, you, like to, uh, you like to tie yourself out in the middle. Was Red, you are making some runs yourself there. What's the secret? Um, you know, just be positive. <laughs> back yourself. No, Pick you your like score in areas and, and back yourself to no, the you hill. You sound like me. Come on, sound a little bit more imaginative. Sound like Mike Tyson. <laughs> He's my hero. Great role model. Get a tattoo <laughs> on the face. Get a general picture. Yeah, you heard that. That's Mr. Strachan there. Uh, all you kids out there, get a tattoo on your face. That's coming Don't from a teacher. Don't quote that. <laughs> I just did. <laughs> Missed time for one. Pushing for two, maybe? No. So you must have seen a few T20 games here. Yes, yes. I wish I played in the game. Where are, yeah, absolutely. Who, who, who sits in your memory? Who, who's, who have you got a, a fond spot for in your memory in terms of Bedford School T20? So there's a boy called Charlie Thurston who finished last year. Uh, he was immense. Yeah? He was literally, yeah, probably one of the best schoolboy cricketers grace the Bedford School fields for a while. Just aggressive, uh, assured of himself, um, and just a joy to watch. Very humble. Um, took himself uh, seriously, but with the right intentions. So always knew that you know life was bigger than the game of cricket. Yeah. But he would literally take parts, um, sides apart. That's one thing I've noticed actually with Paddy at the crease. There's no there's no walking down the wicket, giving it a tap on the track. No, no. You know, sweeping all the rubbish away. And do you need to do that? Do you and and, and do you know what? I, I almost think it is. He just stands at the crease, he takes his guard, yes. he waits for the bowler to bowl, and then he plays a nice shot. And there, there, was a, there was a very good side, you know, that finished two years ago. Uh, captain by Boyd from 
so hard. He's actually at Durham now, playing for Durham. Oh, yeah. Uh, seriously talented, but just had a wonderful way of getting the team together and playing as a team. And he was brilliant, uh, alongside a boy called Tim Gray, who was in Pemberley. Uh, really, really great cricketer, great all-rounder, uh, lightning quick with the ball in hand, and just batted beautifully well. So he kind of, but had that composure, had that composure. Big shout. I think that's going slightly down leg. That's my educated guess there from square leg boundary, <laughs> where I can clearly see loads. Headphones off from Bretty. Yeah, Mr. Brett's taken a slight, a slight. He, he, he keeps checking his Twitter page to see if people are actually following him. The groundsman's tweeting into me. He's watching. Ah, he's listening. <laughs> Is he so watching? Is he listening as well? He's watching and listening. What a man! Great. So all this stuff I'm saying, being heard. Yeah, worldwide, 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 Mr. Shacken. Absolutely, absolutely. Apart from all that sort of, you know, Mike kids, Tyson kids get a tattoo that. on your face stuff. It was pretty good. I apologise. <laughs> Please edit. If you're listening from church or school, that's what you've let yourself in for. <laughs> good luck to you, Mr. Strachan, on your travels in September. Thanks. So. Shot is that going to be stopped? It's not. That's going to be cool. Fantastic shot. Been great fun. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Thanks, mate. Thank you, Mr. Thank Strachan. You. Thank you. Thank you. Lovely accent, I must say. <laughs> interference in the headphones there. Ow. Mr. Pierce going back to the game and after talking to Mr. Strachan. Yeah. There's been a few runs scored over the last two, three overs. It's looking good for Bedford School now. Turn it around. There have. There have there have been a few runs. I think I That's think gone that's straight up, Mr. Peters. That's gonna be out, I think. As long as the man's got safe hands underneath that. Great catch. Indeed. That is a big wicket. He covered a lot of ground there to get that, to that ball. That is a big wicket. Charlie Clark gone. Paddy McDuel catches still at the crease. That is a huge wicket. Bad timing for Bedford. They were going so well though. The last few overs have gone for quite a few runs. Yeah. Mr. Peters is mic is off temporarily, so I'm going solo. Yeah, shame. Oh no, I'm back. Oh, you're back. Good, <laughs> Good job as well. I'm yeah. not sure what I've done without you. <laughs> uh, no, big old wicket there. Charlie Clark gone. Um, Charlie Clark gone. I think, I think we can see uh, Mr. Burgess. No. I think is that Ollie Burgess coming in? I think it is. Looking at the body shape. Big yeah, Ollie Burgess is coming into bat. This is an interesting this, stage this of play. Is, this is an interesting stage of play because you've got Paddy McJewel who is who's in good nick and he's stroking ones, twos, threes, and fours, and Ollie Burgess who's going to look to go straight over the top. So he's got. You can almost you can see the bow in his bat from here. It's curved, it's like a scimitar blade. It's like a Saracen sword. I can see it from here. Beautiful, beautifully put, Mr. Pierce. That's my that's my best Henry Blofeld right there. Keep it coming, keep it coming. No, there aren't. There, there are few birds in the ground. No offence to any of the uh, any anyone that's here. My guess is Mr. Burgess isn't going to hang around out there. Yeah, I think so. Paddy's going to take a single there. That pushes us on on the scoreboard to. 81 for four of 13 overs, so 52 required off the last 6.4. Interesting equation, isn't it? It could go either way still. It, it could. It's still really open. This is fantastic stuff. This is really, 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 really good stuff. It's just good T20 cricket, high standard, good stuff in the field, good stuff in the middle. Who's going to carry the team home? It's nice to see a good crowd in tonight, Mr. Pierce, isn't it? It's really yeah, nice. Yeah, really good crowd, actually. A little bit of atmosphere, a bit of cheering going on in the Everybody background. Just... just Tempts that one down to short square leg. Sneak through for single to get him off the mark. Nice to get off the mark early, isn't it, when you're batting? It is, it is. It's that sort of bugbear, isn't it, in the back of your mind? Am I going to get a duck? Am I going to get a duck? Not for Mr. Brett. He thinks one of two ways. Do I get a duck? Do I get a ton? Well. He's timed that lovely straight on the ground. Lovely shot, but he's only going to get one. He's almost timed it too well. If you're going straight, you need to go over the top or you need to duff it a little bit so that you can take two. For me, Ollie Burgess can't take too much longer getting himself in here. It's getting to that stage of the game where we really do need to hit some more boundaries. Yeah, I was watching, uh, as I watched a little piece with Ben Stokes the other day. And in T20, they allow themselves a maximum of 10 balls before they have to hit a boundary. Is that something that is applicable now, or is it a state? You know, is it the state of the game where actually he needs to absolutely smash it every ball? That's a great point, and I can see where you're coming from. Exactly that. At this stage of the game, I'm just not sure you can give yourself that long. 
If you're coming into the, the uh, innings earlier on, you can give yourself 10 balls if you're in an opening room with three or four. But Ollie coming in here really has got a chance his arm and give Bev the best chance to get in this score. And is that best chance a case of boundaries or is that best chance a case of trying to find the gaps in the field? Having seen Ollie bat in the past, I think he's got to back himself to clear the ropes. He yeah, can hit a big ball. play a normal game. He's a strong boy, he's obviously a rugby player as well, and he can clear the ropes and I'll back himself. It's still better to come behind him if he fails. Flick of the wrists, that's going to be one. I've just tweeted with the link to this commentary that's a little bit later. the 54 Paddy McJool. Well batted, sir. It's a lovely innings. Can he do what we all were talking about at the start of his innings, which is carry his bat to the end and make sure that Bedford... Is it going to be a captain's... Is it going to be the captain's moment? I really would love to see a, a captain's innings. He could do it. Can he bat all the overs and win the game? Walk off with the stumps raised above his head? It's true. <laughs> that would be brilliant to see, wouldn't it? What, all the stumps above his head? All of them, all six. Yeah, all right. And a miss by Burgess, good take by the keeper again. He's done well today, the keeper. He's, um, he's done very well, yeah, he's done very well. He's quite tall for a keeper, I must say. Don't fancy a career in keeping? Not really. I believe that's Mr Montgomery. I wouldn't. And his... I'll just drop it. And his last hand. Two to deep cover. Nice. Deep cover had no chance to stop in that one. A little bit of banter there from uh, the Bedford Cheer boys walking past us, laughing at us with our headsets on. I'm not sure why. I think we're doing a cracking job. What about yourself? Uh, it's not a career change I'm going to be making. <laughs> I, wish it, I wish this was my career. It's absolutely, yeah, absolute it's, pleasure. No, it's fantastic. I just get to watch cricket and hear my own voice. That's a big old shot from Burgess. Oh, Slower ball it's out to Cow. Bounces. He's going to get two. He's going to get two there. He's not going to get four. Oh, good effort. Four. No, he's gone for it. Field a dive for it, but unfortunately he was touching the ball whilst his body was over the line. Therefore, uh, four runs. So four runs to Burgess. A little heave of the cow. I did not expect that to go for four. Unfortunately, we can't actually see cow from when we're seeing, but I have got a <laughs> monitor to my left, I've just realised, which is quite useful when you come and turn. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't realise that one was there. <laughs> Spence Minsky, do you want to have a chat? Oh, yeah. He'll have a chat after the game. He'll have a chat Intense after character. Game. He's all about that. He's all about the cricket. Team man. Burgess, their lovely little feather down to third man. Just gonna take that for one. More boundaries. More boundaries for Burgess would be absolutely ideal here for Bedford. Really take the pressure off the guys who have to come in if required. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think I've seen him bat this restraint before. Pressure. Pressure can get to anybody. The best of. Yeah, you know all about pressure, you know all about the yips. Is this going to be close? Oh, not in this field. That man, short middle kit, it occasionally has been fumbled. The leagues in general have been wonderful in the field. For you me. have to say, but there has been the occasional run out chance. I think it's when, that, when, when you get it in your head, oh, I could run him out of here. Just your hands shake that little bit. I must say, I thought he would cut that one off. He's very close in there, and to run a single to him there, the fielder would be pretty upset with that, I think, conceding the run there. If you are in the ring, you know, ideally, at the first four balls or whatever, you do want to be cutting off those singles, and then if it hasn't been a boundary, you can ease off onto the ring and stop the boundary. So we're at 93 for four now, 41 runs required. It's close. It's a lovely little shot there. That looks it like should four get runs. two, could be four. Is that going to go for four? That has gone for four. It's that late cut again, isn't it? It Mr. is Pierce. that late cut. He does love that shot, and that pushes him on towards 56. Lovely applause for the late cut there. The crowd really enjoyed that. Everyone loves a late cut. Tell you what, Mr. Brett, I'm absolutely desperate. What for? Just for the loop. Tell you what, I'll be back in 30 seconds. Make sure it is. I can't hold this foot by myself. You'll be fine, just talk us through your hundred. <laughs> 37 balls. Off his legs. Captain off his legs. Looks like he might go for four. Attempt in vain by the Leeds fielder. Four runs. Another boundary. This is a very good, very good over for Bedford. Exactly what they needed. The captain really is timing his knock splendidly well. 
how will the bowler reply? He's gone a little bit too leg side there. Needs to bowl a little bit more to the off stump. Bowler comes in. Again on the leg stump, this worked a short mid wicket who cuts it off. Just a single. But you don't mind getting a single after you've scored a boundary. Keeps that scoreboard ticking over. Exactly what Bedford need at this current moment. I'd say Bedford score. Just slightly getting ahead here. Scoreboard is really in 102 off 15 overs. They're four down. They still need 32. It's still tight. I wouldn't want to call it at this stage, but I think Bedford maybe just nipped ahead. Burgess to face the right arm seamer. High back lift. Short ball. He's got hold of it. He's whipped it off his legs. Two bounce four. Just behind square. Ollie will be really pleased with that shot. He's doing his job very well. Two boundaries already for Mr. Burgess. Fantastic. Hopefully he can keep going. Ideally, you don't really want to take this to the last over. The last over situations are highly pressurised. If they can knock this off before the last over, that would be fantastic. And there's a good chance they could have to keep batting in this positive manner. What will the bowler's reply be? Late cut, it's gone very fine. Third man comes around. He's tried to stop it, he's got a full hand on it, but it's still tripled over the boundary for four. So another boundary. Bedford are really running away with this game in the late stages. He really is performing very well here, Ollie. He obviously knew his role, he needs to score boundaries quickly. He's wasted no time in getting his eye in. I'm sure. Mr. Montgomery, the coach, will be extremely pleased with his contribution. Mr. Peters is just wandering back after a little break. Again, a thick edge, gone fine again. The third man comes around this time and collects it. Just a single. Oh, they must be outstandingly pleased. I'm back. Started to kick on since I left, have they? Yeah, there's a lot of I think there's two or three boundaries from that over. Really put Bedford in the uh, driving seat. So, so it's now 111 for four off 15 overs. 23 needed then off the last five. I think that may be four overs left. I think, I think the board's is updated that, yet. Is that four? So we're going at just about five and over. That's the required run rate. I have to say, when I went to Luke, I, I couldn't look. Many people here, it's really impressive. There's about 250 people here. Um, I'm, I think it's, I think it's brilliant. I'm loving it. I'm having a great time. Change of bowling. Any time. Spinner. Is the spinner who opened the bowling? Is it? Let's have a look. It's not. It's a new man. This is Bedford's games to lose now, isn't it? Would you say? I think, I think it's still in the balance. I think there's still pressure on the batsman, even though they've got batsman in hand. Four overs, 23 runs. You've got to drop and run, and the field know that. Obviously, the new fi the fielding restrictions have changed, and there's more men out deep, so there's more opportunity for singles. But with the spinner, if he can keep a tight line, it is the spinner that opened. There are runs. Are they going to get two down here? They should get two. Easy two. And that's what Bedford need to keep doing if they're going to go through. They need to keep that run rate around a runner ball. I'd be disappointed if Bedford lost from here, I must say. But, you know, anything ha can happen in 2020. You know that better than anybody. Absolutely. I mean, we've talked a lot about Paddy McJewell's importance. There's a big shout and there. His foot was down. I'm not sure what the bowlers was appearing for. They've I think he thought he nicked it. They've catch and stump it uh, there. Yeah, we've talked, we've talked a little bit about Paddy. We've talked about how important he is for today's game. You know, Gary Steer brought it up. We brought it, you know, well, we brought it up. We asked Gary about it. He said he's important, and so far, so good. He's, he's looked fantastic out in the middle. He's been that anchor. He's, he's been fantastic. A lovely feathered touch there from Ollie Burgess. Is that going to go all the way for four? It's not. Are they going to get three? By the looks of things, they are. Paddy McDowell running so hard there. Three runs. The crowd really enjoyed that, didn't they? Yeah, that was a lovely little shot. The running has been absolutely splendid, I must admit. Yeah, they're running between the wickets. As well. I mean, there haven't been that many boundaries. Have we seen a six? I don't, think we have. I don't think we have. I don't think we have. Not required. Right. Yeah, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't seen a six, but we have seen a lot of singles, a lot of singles. So in terms of a chase, a lot coming from just being quick between the wickets. Give us a tweet if you're watching. 
Hashtag BS Cricket 15. At Tom Brett 24. Don't don't worry about Tom Brett. He's fine. He's got enough followers. He's he's scrounging enough followers. Hashtag BS Cricket 15. If you're watching, no matter who you are supporting, we'll read it out and let you know your thoughts, unless they are negative about us, in which case we won't tweet them. It was lovely to hear from Tom Bradbury's mother earlier. Absolute treat that was. Yeah, Tom's doing. Tom's doing. Uh, he's doing really well at Essex. So all the best to him here. Good luck in his future. I heard he got a job at a bank. Good luck to the bank. Yeah, I think John Charles might have a few things to say about that. Yeah, hopefully he gets signed up professionally. We do all wish him well at Bradford School. <laughs> Massive talent, and I hope he goes all the way and uh, kicks James Foster up number one spot. Absolutely. That'd be a fantastic effort. Richard Kaufman, the um, the coach for the opposition, is walking onto the pitch. He's trying to get a message across to his captain. I think he's getting slightly frustrated the way Bedford are freely scoring in the late yeah, late stage of this game. I think he saw those singles. I think they've I think I think they've I think they've leaked so many singles today. A couple of tactical changes in the field. What, what does it look like? What does it look like's happened then in the field? Looks like they've lost their mid wicket and have just gone for a deep mid wicket. So there's one there every time if if Ollie can spot that. But his go-to shot has been in the late cut and they've got a short third man for yeah, the spinner. Yeah, that's interesting. So where does he go now? Does he go over the top? There's no one at Cow. I oh, know there is a man at Cow. There's oh, they've changed the field again. They took the the cover out and put them at mid wicket to stop that one. But they've lost their point. So. Looks like there's runs at the point position, so the cut's back on. That's a big old swing, that. That's going to go for four, isn't it? It's going to be the fielder. It's four runs. It is going to be the fielder. That's a tricky one, isn't it? The one that bounces several times before it gets to you, that's the one that will get you. All you can do there is throw your body in the way and hope for the best. You know, you can't really get your hands on it cleanly. And that's a great strike. Agricultural looking shot, but it's done the job. <laughs> So let us know what you think at uh, hashtag BSCricket15. <laughs> Was that agricultural? Is Mr. Brett just being a bit of a insert? Now for me, that's fantastic yeah. cricket. He's played the big plough, he's got four runs, and he's just dropped it to short point, and he's got the one. Now that is good thinking from Ollie. Not only brute strength, but he's also got the mind to match. You have to say, you have to say, it's, it's, it's been a bit of a story here, because you've got, at one end you've got, Paddy McJaw, who's played, a, who's played a lovely innings and uh, pretty much has put Bedford on his shoulders and carried them most of the way. But on the other hand, you've got the Leeds, who have, who have fielded nicely. They've bowled really tight lines. And actually, they've made it so hard for Bedford to get back into this game, especially after that big early loss of AJ Momi and, and, and Ben, ben Slavinsky going so early on and Furbank going quite cheaply. Actually, this has been much tighter than, than it looked like it was going to be at the turn. And, and I think it's down to, at the moment, the standout man is the fact that Paddy McJewell is still at the crease, wouldn't you say? Definitely. The way he's, he's carried this innings after you say, like those early wickets, and he's, he's, he took his time to get going, but he's still there. And Ollie's batted around him beautifully and really took the pressure off him at the late stages, and it and looks like Bedford are cruising to victory, but you don't want to speak too soon in this game. Yeah, it's, it's always going to be tight, isn't it? I mean, it's 2020, you never know what's going to happen. And then there's, there's that feather down to short third man again. Goes to the bowler's end, there's going to be overthrows. That, that's I mean, that's symptomatic, isn't it? That pressure, that running between the wickets, does put you under pressure in the field. And the point, unfortunately, is has suffered under pressure and has thrown a real hard throw at the, the uh, bowler's end, and the bowler hasn't been able to get a hand on it. It's an extra run for Bedford, it's not what you want at this time. That's well bowled. The old fashioned Yorker. So it's 126 for four then, off 18 overs. Eight needed off the last two. Look at that scoreboard. What do you do with the field now? Coming into the last two overs. Oh, oh you can't do six. much against that, that's huge. That's six. I'm afraid my question before is irrelevant as they only need two off the last two overs. Yeah, this is all but over. A fantastic shot there from Ollie Burgess, who seems to be getting a little bit of lip from the uh, keeper there. I'm not sure if I'd be talking to a guy who just hit one over the sight screen. Well, you never know. He could be saying good shot. Doesn't look like it to me. A little bit of disappointment from the opposition, maybe. 
Umpire's having a word. I don't. I don't think it's too sinister. I think that's fine. I think there seems to be something going on in the middle. It's all part of cricket, though. I suppose. It doesn't get too serious. Who sledged you when you were playing professionally, Mr. Brett? Then, who's had a sledge at you? Who's had a what do they say? Oi, lanky, blondie, white felt tip, cue ball. My teammates Albino. used to call me. Um, Gollum out of Lord of the Rings <laughs> when I was 15. Fantastic. You've seen me when I was 15, Mr. I have Peters. seen you when you were 15. I yeah. did look, look a bit like a creature. Yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. You looked a bit like a. You know those fish that, that live 100, mar 100 metres, you know, two, 300 metres down at the bottom of the ocean? They don't get any light and so they don't have any pigment in their skin. Yeah, yeah. If I get five followers at Tom Brett 24, I will post that picture for you. <laughs> oh, please. A little bit of incentive oh, for you please. this evening. The world needs to see that picture. Two runs needed then. And Stumped. the foot is up. A top innings has come to an end. Foot was up in the crease. Stonewall there from the umpire at square leg. That was an easy one. This one gets interesting now. This one gets interesting. A lovely innings, but it gets interesting. Shiv Jala comes to the crease. Shiv can hit a big ball. Well, he's need limping. Two to win. He is, he is. Shiv Jala comes to the crease. He's definitely got a limp on. That's not a euphemism. We talked about the Leeds keeper all night, and that again was a fantastic piece of work. A flashing blade in front of his face, and he's managed to take the ball cleanly and rip the bowels up in no time at all, leaving Bedford, uh, Bedford School's captain stranded out of his crease. A great stumping, but also a fantastic innings. The captain must be really that's pleased a, with that. That's a great reception. That's a great reception from uh, from the home crowd. A little fist, a little fist pump Paddy's on his way off. He knows he's done the job. Yeah, yeah, he's done a great Can job. Can Shiv Jala finish it off though? Before the last over, wouldn't that be nice? Take the pressure off. Yeah, we all called it. Tom Bradbeer's back with us. After a nice tweet from his mother. Is he? Yeah. That's Nick. That's going to be one. So one needed then for Bedford to get the win. Schools are tied. Tom, what do you think? My prediction was right. Um, I think Paddy's batted really, really well. He's, he's yank anchored the innings, which I stress the importance of. So, well played, Paddy. I think, I think you stressed the importance of that after you were asked the question about whether or not you thought Paddy was going to be the anchor for the innings. But no, no, you're right. Slow ball is dispatched. Four. That should be the game then for Bedford School. What a way for Ollie to Four finish runs. off. A great day, a good day of cricket. A big win for Bedford School. And a great occasion for the whole school. Hope everybody enjoyed listening to the commentary and everybody here at the ground in a good time. It's a great, it's a great day for. Uh, it's a, it was a lovely, a lovely, a lovely game of cricket. A bit of a game of two halves, uh, but we got there in the end. Um, a fantastic innings from Paddy McJoy. He really carried his bat. Great knock, a top knock from Paddy McJoy. Credit to Ollie Burgess as well. He really took the pressure off Paddy with some splendid boundaries. And got both for the win. Yeah, it was a real captain's innings. That I was, so, I was so impressed. I was so impressed uh, with with Paddy McDowell. He really, he really led from the front there. Uh, it's, he really, really showing what you can do uh, when you have got a good head on you on, on a good set of shoulders. I just see how many cliches I can fit in. <laughs> he did a good job. So the question is, when's the next round? I'm looking forward to that already. Yeah, I'm. I'm I, uh, that, uh, so am I. I. I hopefully, we'll be reprised from our, from our positions. Uh, and, and, and it's a good job. I hope, hopefully, Mr. Montgomery doesn't go anywhere near that uh, coaching of uh, the wicket keepers because if he performs like he did in the staff match the other day, they'll be dropping them left, right, and centre. But you have to say, the coach has done well today. Game plan works yeah, magnificently well. Fantastic. Well batted. Fantastic innings from Paddy. We'll see if we can get him over, actually, before the day is out. Please walk um, off to a respectful round of applause. Really great game from the Leeds. Fantastic uh, performance from them. Really active in the field. Just didn't quite set a total big enough. Is that fair enough to say? I think it's fair enough to say. I think 1-4-5, they might have been right in it, like the last game they played. But that was just slightly short of what they wanted after speaking to their coach. And it, it, it showed, didn't it? No, it absolutely did. We'll see if we can get a couple of people over to have a chat with us uh, from the team. Um, perhaps perhaps Mr Montgomery. I wonder if he's, he's, he likes the sound of his own voice. So we'll see if we can get him over. He's, he's, he's shaking his head. He's got his pencil behind his ear like, like a true hero. I don't think he wants to come over. I, I think, don't he, think he wants to take the applause. A, I think he wants to enjoy the applause. Can't blame him. Let's go then win by five wickets in the final over of the game. Final over and a half of the game. 
So uh, a good result, a good result. Nice to sit the headmaster turn out to watch the game as well. It's a busy man, nice to find time to support the equipment. Yeah, absolutely. I'm surprised he's not watching from his, uh, from his, from his living room. He's got a fantastic view there. He certainly has. I'm surprised he's not watching on YouTube, listening to our fantastic commentary. Yeah, it's all about the fantastic commentary, I think. I'm surprised. I'd be surprised, I'd be surprised if people are still listening, listening actually. <laughs> Probably bored people to death, yeah, but yeah. apologies if anyone has fallen asleep. You know when they do that thing on, on Sky or on TMS yeah, and they rotate it every 20 minutes? I know why, it's because we're so boring. People are just turned off already. It's nice to get a couple of tweets, though, I must admit. Mr. Guest is back. Mr. Guest, thoughts, thoughts on today's game, then? Fancy Bedford School's chances of going all the way in this competition. Is there a chance of winning it? It's difficult to say. 2020 is, is, a, is a toss of a coin game. You know, and the more and more we get it and, uh, and, and, and it hits the runs or, or, or ball out of the street, and the game can turn on a toss of a coin. So you, you, you never know, you never know. But the boys are strong, they were just beginners. The fact that uh, we got to a couple made it easy, made it easy. Would you have approached it in the same way the Bedford Schools uh, boys did? They gave themselves a chance at the top to get their eyes in and then they, they picked up the pace. Or would you have gone a bit more gun ho early doors? Uh, this is the big dilemma in 2020 cricket. When you've got a, a total that is, is achievable, do you go off and you know, above the run rate to get it? Or do you, do you stay behind the run rate and you know, you can celebrate with because you're weakest now? You know, there's, a, there's a thing about English cautiousness and the fact that we play on really good kids and you know, they've all moved around a bit. We, we say that we would like to, to, to make sure we're in there or thereabouts with... So, it, it, see, see, see where you are at 10, you know, see where you are at 10 and, and, and go from there, you know, that, that's, that's one way. It's nice to see Ollie Burgess's father, Barry Burgess, head of sport here at Bedford School. Big smile on his face. You don't often see that. He's obviously pleased with the way his son played tonight. And I must say, it was an outstanding innings. He really took the pressure off everybody else. Some lusty blows and a nice touchdown to third man on several occasions. I know Mr. Uh, Guest really enjoyed that innings. Yeah, we've got a we've got a, a, a tweet here from Luke Mully. He said it's a big shout out to Tommy Dunn, who's playing today. He's only 13 years old. He's playing, and quote unquote, hence he's so wild. Um, a sentiment which can be expressed and uh, extended towards Mr. Guest. That's why. Fantastic. Fantastic. Hopefully, he's listening. Some highlights here. Fantastic from, uh, from, uh, from, 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 from Tom here again. Actually, they're really putting. Uh, there's, there's, there's some, there's some highlights going on the screen at the moment. So, there's, in fact, there's some highlights of a war. I hope that's Mr. Montgomery. I hope that's. I hope that's not Mr. Montgomery. I hope that's not Mr. Montgomery with the gloves on because that really would be tragic. I'm pretty sure it's the game, not the warm up. No, that, that is the game, you're right, that is the game. on the ball, it's fantastic. <laughs> this is, I mean. Okay, so it's 1 6. This is great! Look at this! Oh, They've done really well there, haven't they? It's a great, great team here at Bevershaw. And that's the end of the 18th over, so it's 165 after 18. Oh, thanks to Mr. Guest for joining us. Always a fantastic And also, just, just to point out, the video today has been spot on. It's been an awesome match. There's Jake Dutch over there. Let's see if we can get him over and have a chat with him. We're going to get Jake Dutch over. The keeper extraordinaire is going to have a chat with us. Looks like he doesn't know he's having a chat with us, but he's coming over to have a chat with us. Jake, uh, well done. A few, a few words then about today's game. Uh, yeah, really, really important that we uh, that we won today uh, because obviously they're a very good side we've beaten this year. 
and we, we, uh, we wanted to get into the last six day, uh, the last day because then we won game away from finals day and finals day is what it's all about you know it's a really good day out so really glad that we won today Jake talk to us about your game plan going into this game did Montgomery Mr Montgomery have many points for you or was it a case of the lads just doing doing their own thing um, well we practiced training quite a lot in, um, in chasing down scores uh, so we did that quite a lot um, in chasing down scores in like four overs at the end so that was really really good but then we were able to put that into practice in the game so how, how was wicket keeping up there today was it spinning we couldn't quite tell from from being square onto the wicket was it gripping at all for the spinners out there no not a huge lot it wasn't spinning a lot it was skidding through so it was difficult for batting and i suppose wicket keeping as well because you didn't know which ones were going to bounce and which ones were just going to stay low so it kept everyone on their toes i think so what do you think what do you think was the most important facet of today's game that got you the win yeah, probably staying calm under pressure uh, paddy Paddy there throughout was very, very uh, clever in the way that he batted. We went, we went behind the rate, but we, uh, we didn't panic. We, we kept on going, and I was, I was really pleased for, for him and for the side that we were able to get over the line. What was the chat like between the boys when you lost those early wickets? Uh, well, we, we didn't panic too much, actually. Uh, we, we, kept our, we kept our calm. We just said, look, we've just got to get through to 10 overs and then back ourselves in the last 10 with a few wickets in hand that we could chase down pretty much anything. It was a lightning quick outfield. It was a fantastic win. Um, do you have any insight into when the next round is and who you might be playing at all? Uh, I'm not sure where the next round is, but I think we're playing Malvern College. Uh, okay. So let's talk about that one. Um, I've seen their under-15 side come here in recent weeks, and we beat them in the Taverners, but they were a strong side. Uh, I know they recruit a lot from the Worcestershire County Cricket Club, so do you see that being a quite a big test? Uh, yeah, also they, they beat us in uh, pre-season. So them and Harrow, they're the only two sides to beat us so far. But we didn't really turn up on the day. Um, and I think we've learned quite a few lessons from that. Um, we, we know quite a lot about them and about, you know, you know they've got four or five really good players. Um, so we're going to be looking to target those, you know, get, get them out cheaply, you know, and hopefully we can uh, get over the line against them as well and get to final today. Do you see yourself, or can, could you see the team going all the way in this competition, or is that too much of an ask? Oh yeah, definitely. I, I could see us going, you know, all the way to the final. I, I reckon that we could win it. You know, if we play some smart T20, you know, have a bit of luck along the way, as every team needs. And I think we'll uh, we'll be with a great chance of winning. One thing me and Mr. Peters have noticed about this team, you've got a lot of depth, haven't you, in terms of bowling and batting. But especially on the batting, you've got an array of different bats and guys who can knock it around. Guys can hit a long ball. Just a uh, little bit on AJ. We missed out on seeing him bat long tonight, but what, what can he do? Oh, yeah, he, he's an unbelievable batsman. He can hit uh, most bowling out the park. You know, he, he can hit the ball absolutely miles, that's the thing. And also, where some batsmen would struggle, he's quite an un unconventional player, so he can hit you know, balls 360 degrees and he can hit them a long way. So I think, and he's dangerous on any, any boundary, he'll, he'll back himself to clear it. Fantastic. In terms of the weekend, what's the next fixture for the, the Bedford School first team? We've got, we got Stowe tomorrow in a 50 over game. Uh, we'll so be looking to bring that same there, intensity then, so that we have in T20 to the, the, the longer 50 over format. Weekend, weekend. So and uh, we'll be looking to, to get a good win against those as well because we beat them oh, earlier on in the T20. Yeah, fantastic. fantastic. Good man, thanks uh, a lot. Right, brilliant. Thanks, thanks for joining us, Jake. Well done. Uh, Congratulations. Great stuff. I think we should see if we can get someone else. Yeah, I, think I, think, I think we should milk this for as long as we possibly can. Make the most of being on our So uh, let's. I want to get hold of. I want to get hold of Mr. Montgomery. That's who I want. I want to hear a word from the coach. I want to hear a final say. I want to see if he'll come over, Mr. Montgomery. And uh, we've just sent a runner off to try and chew his ear off to come over. He does yeah. like a word. I'm not sure me and Mr. Pitts will get a word in edgeways. No, it's all right. Don't worry. We're, we're, we're cool. We're chilling. Um, yeah, no, good to hear from Jake. Top stuff. Thanks for joining us, Jake. He's got, a, he's got a future career in being interviewed. Absolutely. He said his words uh, absolutely fantastically. Mr. Montgomery, Mr. Montgomery's waiving all chances of uh, an interview. But we've got the man. We've got the man here. Yeah, I'm looking for one. We've got the man here who. Uh, Who's been averaging? He's been averaging 41 up until today. Why is it Tom Bradbury not playing today? Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, right. International duty. Okay. AJ, talk to us. The ECB have banned him from playing. AJ, talk to me about, about the win. Uh, what was the game plan? Oh uh, yeah, it was, it was quite a good win. That very well. Uh, we haven't yeah, really. We haven't chased. We haven't chased. Down the gap superbly. That's raced away on this quick outfield here at Bedford School. So we practiced on chasing quite a lot this week. The How do you practice on chasing? Just because uh, Mr. Bretley's uh, pick up a few yeah, tips. It's, it's been smoothed down a lot. How do you practice on chasing? It's pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs>
Um, well, we're going pairs. We have four rows. We must have spent a fair few hours making up this. Yeah, I think so. Two separate teams. I definitely wouldn't mind playing on this every other week. And we get a target. Yeah, we had a battle the other week, didn't we, Mr. Brett? Yeah, with the streamer and his flat. You got a few runs, Mr. P. Do you want to talk to the viewers? Hey, Joe, we've talked, we've talked up a lot tonight on commentary. We know you've been averaging 40 in the 2020s, and we know you can hit a big ball. Have you got any tips out there for the uh, youngsters who might Not be listening really. on hitting a big ball? Really Obviously, 2020 is a massive, <laughs> massive part of the game these days, and um, people are always hungry for knowledge. You got anything for us? Go to the gym. Many balls as well, 33 to the gym. Go to the gym. I practice quite a lot on the ball machine. You just come in and play that way. Uh, yeah, facing fast bowling is. Uh, well, you can call me boring. It's up to you. But facing, yeah, facing fast bowling, I so left arm over. So up the length early. It's an and option the yeah. Bedford School didn't have. It's a change around. Really. Really. How important is that? You've you got to make over. sure you get under it. I'm a big believer in left yeah. arms yeah. in general. So, yeah. so yeah. if you've got a certain yeah. scoring yeah. area, do you look to go cow, straight, it's cover? What, what's, where's your areas? Wherever the ball is, it'll go over the boundary. Just back top inside. Back yourself to the hill. I like that. Confidence is key. Mrs. Lincoln, popping her head in, looking fabulous. <laughs> do you want to swap? Do you want to come in? No, we don't want Shiv. Shiv, Shiv didn't play. We don't want Shiv. <laughs> Shiv's got a broken didge. Yeah, Shiv has got a broken, broken didge. Uh, well, t what happened today then? We won. No, <laughs> talk to me about you in bat. You looked annoyed when you got out. What oh, happened? Oh, oh, I was very... Did you hit it? Did you I hit I it? might have a few words with the umpire <laughs> later, but... <laughs> Did you, uh, did you think yeah, we hit it? it we thought we let's just say, if you didn't hit my pads, it was going for four. So right. down leg. It was go yeah, it was, it was going down, and uh, I middled it. I have a cherry to show you as well, if you'd like. So, so, so why were you so annoyed? Were you so annoyed with yourself? Were you annoyed with the decision? What were you annoyed at? Uh, I was annoyed with the, the decision as well as myself, because I uh, shouldn't really be inside edge. I, was I, was, I, I could tell myself I was very nervous when I was playing. Uh, that's obviously not good. So. That's all right. What well, one reason then? One reason today. Why did you win? I'd say, cool heads. Cool heads. We had cool heads. Yeah. Jake. Jake. Darksby said, "Calm under pressure." You said, "Cool heads." Yeah. It's a. Uh, it's a common theme. Cheers, AJ. Thanks AJ, for thanks for joining us. Thanks for your stellar insight. I'll remember next time to when I'm thinking about where I'm going to hit the ball. Just, just, just hit the ball. Yeah, yeah. Thanks clear mind. I like that. Thanks for AJ. Yeah, clear minds. Clear minds. Great stuff. Uh, we'll end it there. Thanks. Thanks. I'm sure there's no one else watching, but if 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 there is, if, if there is, then thanks for thanks for bearing with us and uh, enjoy your Pims and Peroni, and hopefully we'll we'll see you next round. We'll see you again soon. Thanks very much. All Cheers. the best.